Tomato Fights, back. Six-month break. We're back. Hotter than ever. Pete is there. Adam Jones is there. What's up, Adam Jones? What's up, guys? We did not specify which Adam Jones we were having. Do you ever get that? Uh, no, but that was a good move by you. Like, let, <laughs> keep the people guessing. Don't don't tell them what's in store. I'm just honored that it's it's been six months. You guys haven't done it, and I'm I'm sitting in on this thing. Yeah, well, we had Saul. Saul kind of took over our uh, bonus content attention, and it takes a lot of effort to do these things because you got to get somebody who's willing to watch two movies. Famously, Katie Nolan was pissed when she realized that she had to do that after she agreed <laughs> to come on, and then was like. Wait, so we're watching both of the, the, the movies? We've also made history here because you're the first guest to request to be on Tomato yeah, Fights. Yeah, to want to do a specific oh, movie. Oh, I want. I wanted to do... I didn't even know what movies there were. Well, actually, that's true. I knew one of the movies. Uh, but yeah, I, wa I want to do this. That's true. All right, so it is old school. It's a match of the 60s. The decreasingly quotable old school versus potentially the most self-explanatory movie ever, Draft Day. Old school... Which came out in 2003, followed 2000's Road Trip as Todd Phillips' second movie, 2014's Draft Day, looked to take advantage of the increasing popularity of the NFL draft as a sporting event, but had to fight off coming off as corny. Jones, what was your relationship with these two films before Tomato Wait, Fights? Wait, yeah, you, you can't ask that oh, first. Oh, so, oh, first Wait, question. You're rusty here. Isn't this a good idea for a podcast? Oh, so no, no joke, <laughs> tremendous idea for a podcast. Is this something everybody says? It's a tremendous idea for a podcast. I don't know how these are only 60s. Like yeah. That's, that's shockingly low so we on two it counts. On the, this week's regular episode, the uh, I feel like you land on both sides because I was stunned that old school was only a 60, and I was stunned that draft day was a 60. That high. Yeah. You were surprised that it was yeah. that high. Yeah. I can see that. But no, it's a tremendous idea for a pod. Uh, as some would say, and I've I've heard this and maybe even been told to say this, it's a million dollar idea. People what have I've been, kicked what I've heard. million dollar ideas. Sean Evans, I believe, on his episode, he does say, like, where do I write the check? A lot of talk about mm -hmm. actually giving us $1 million at some point, which was really, really nice of him. We famously said no because we didn't want to lose the drive. We, yeah, wanted, yeah, we yeah. wanted to earn the you million dollars. You want to stay dollars. hungry. Are you yeah, familiar right. with the... Well, plus different. you want to hold out for somebody giving you a billion dollars, I would imagine. It's true. Yes. Yeah. Are As you familiar Justin with Timberlake the... once said, the $1 million dollar isn't cool. <laughs> right. Are you familiar with the theory of uh, 1,000 true fans? No, we're more into that. It's basically that uh, oh, instead uh, of having like millions of like bandwagon fans, you want a thousand true the, fans. The, like the way to earn a, a, a dependable living as a content creator is not necessarily to shoot for the moon with that one thing. Although I'll bring up Sean Evans, like in that case, he had a bajillion dollar idea and he's going to kill it forever because of that. But generally you want to try to find a thousand people who will buy your shit? Yeah. Versus, we've been trying to do that for ten years on the night show. It hasn't really happened Dude, yet. But, a we're, but we're, impossible. we're slow. We're slowly building to it. I think. We're slowly building. You can get a thousand listeners, but a thousand fans is borderline impossible. Yeah, we definitely don't have that. Yeah, I, I really just do want to start with draft day because you have such a strong relationship with that movie. But we will start with old school first. Can you just give okay. us the story of how you got into draft day? Draft Day and or what your school? relationship with Draft Day is. Oh, well, Draft Day, I, I would recommend is something that you need for your fantasy draft. That's something that you need to watch to get in the mood, really feel and understand how you're going to move around, maneuver around and capitalize <laughs> on the best pick. Because I think Kevin Costner, Sonny Weaver Jr., really hammers that home. But how, how did I get a connection to this movie? Well, I was going to say, uh, I well, never one year ago, it. how many times would you say you had seen Draft Day? <laughs> I had one year never ago? seen Draft Day, I don't think, until Super Bowl weekend. Three so months forget, ago, something. forget a year ago, I had never seen it until this homework project that you guys gave me. I had never seen it sober. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so this is the first time I've seen it sober. But now I've seen it, I don't know, about six times, including, I don't know, three and change on my fantasy draft night. So yeah, so I've I've seen it. I've seen it a good amount, and it gets, I can say this honestly, it gets better every time. So I do love the idea of Draft Day being like your drunk movie of choice and being just like hammered and being like, yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Dude, fuck I, mean, I was going Bo to say, Callahan. you come, you come <laughs> home and you pop it in the DVR. <laughs> yeah. I have seen you watch Draft Day, I believe, five times. Yeah. So six does make sense. But yeah, you'd never seen it before. Never seen and it. We were having and now like I watch it like it's like it's Scarface. <laughs> it's just on a loop. I'm just watching, watching it nonstop, quoting it. Yes, now I just watched it. We were it all having the time. a guys' night and it was on AMC, and some of the fellows were like, oh, draft day's on. 
Jones like, you know what? I actually cool, never saw this. We were like, it's a cool let's, crew. Let's keep it on. It's, it's a cool it's, crew, Pete. If you if you couldn't tell, it's a cool crew. Oh, yeah. Watching AMC. I mean, it sounds like a ripping, good time to ripping me. Coors Lights. Yeah. Oh, I mean, if you, if if that was sarcastic and you wanted me to think that that wasn't a cool time, you got the wrong audience. But here. Dur- during our fantasy draft, we just kept it on. The Scarface is a good comparison. What yeah. I would do in college. This shows how extremely uncool I was. My move was if you're having having ever having like a party or something. This is what you pop on the screen. You put in the DVD to, have I told you this? Yeah. You to Knocked the, Up. Yeah, and it's just the, the, uh, the menu scene. Screen. Of, the menu scene of uh, Catherine Heigl and Seth Rogen dancing to the, oh, shit, check that out, don't move it like a gypsy. <laughs> Wait, that's just on a loop. That's so when, I would just put that on the screen. That's when that comes on? Like when you put on the movie to be like, deleted scenes extra scenes like yeah. whatever it was just the like the main menu was oh shit check that out but it was i miss menu screens on dvds man. yo we should do like a menu screens podcast yes i don't yeah. know what it would entail yeah i don't know that i'd watch just... that but <laughs> but yeah it's good that's a that's a thousand dollar idea so you're a you're a DraftKings uh aficionado and because you are of a certain age all of us have seen old school many many times so this is I feel that we're all experts on this at our auction, as I said, or we can't say auction anymore, fantasy sports, at our budget draft. We just had that going on a loop. Like, I missed out on certain players because I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. He's calling the Jaguars. You're like, Shh, they're fucking trading with the Jaguars. I can't, I can't Jeffy's focus. Jeffy's about to chunk it again. Jeffy's about to <laughs> chunk this trade big time. Let's start with old school, though, which, as I said, Todd Phillips' second movie did not know that. I didn't know that Todd Phillips was the gangbang guy. Oh, that was that was wait, a, that's him in the movie. Yeah, yeah, huh? Which is very funny to think about that, like the guy who made Joker, which was nominated for Best Picture, is the gangbang guy in old old school. <laughs> this movie famously not nominated for Best Picture, as it, you saw, it's got a sixty on Rotten Tomatoes. The Rotten Tomatoes synopsis says, while not consistently funny. The movie does have its moments. It was panned by some critics. Roger Ebert gave it one star, saying, This is not a funny movie, although it has a few good scenes and some nice work by Farrell as an apparently compulsive nudist. I will say, revisiting <laughs> old school, it's just in my brain, and I'm probably speaking for all of us, it's in my brain as classic. Yeah. Funniest shit in the world. Yeah. It came out when I was a young man. I we like you were the right age. I was definitely the right age right. for it. And even though this movie has Will Ferrell, Vince Vaughn, a lot of established people by that point. I mean, Will Ferrell was already doing Night at the Roxbury, obviously big SNL star. Vince Vaughn was certainly established by that point. It felt like this massive breakout for mm-hmm. all these people. It was 100%. Like, Will Ferrell is the fucking man now. And oh my god, Vince Vaughn, he's tall and he's fucking funny and he put it, it seemed like this revolutionary movie that when I revisit now, I'm like, it isn't as funny as I thought it was, but you're going to get that. I, I mean, like I, it definitely wasn't as like groundbreaking as I thought it was when I was fucking 12 years old or whatever it was. <laughs> but like, and yeah, maybe it hit me at the right time to have that nostalgia feel. This movie, I would say is still consistently funny. It hasn't aged well in a lot of areas and we'll for sure get to that. But I thought this movie moved pretty well uh, as somebody who hasn't seen it in a while, but obviously knows it well. Still very funny to me. I I was surprised. I think, and again, I don't want to like jump the gun on what you guys wanted to. I'm surprised that there is, though, a lot of stuff that's in like everyday, like quotable conversation. You already said it's less quotable and it's less quotable by the day. Quotable. Maybe. But like there's a lot of things where I'm like, oh, that's where did that come from? Oh, this movie? Great call. Yeah. yeah. You know, definitely. like I'm like, this is oh. me leaving. This is me leaving, or like even like good talk. Yes, that came. Did that come from this? Yo, good talk. See out there came from this movie, well, and it followed arguably the most treacherous line of this movie, which was, and it, that's not the most treacherous line. There's like a million more treacherous lines, but that followed Craig Kilborn saying, "You're not going to tell on me, right? Because guys don't tell on each other. That's something that chicks do." Yep. <laughs> You're not a chick, right? And then he says, good talk, see out there. And all of us, at whatever age, were like, he said, good talk, see out there? That was a cool thing that, that, that all that's the like, things he just but said. But that's like still a thing I think people say, no? Like, I still see that, yeah. and I'm oh, like, yeah. oh, so that came from here. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. a lot of that in this movie I was surprised at. Definitely. Yeah. Um, what else comes from, I mean, This Is Me Leaving was a big one. Uh, is that supposed to be funny? Am I laughing? Are you a stand-up comedian? Maybe not that line specifically, but that became a joke in everything. Like, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Is this where I laugh right now? That was that was Dean Pritchard, even, man. Even earmuffs, like yo, yep, earmuffs big was yep. a big one for a while. You're my boy, blue is obviously one that people use for a long time. Probably not anymore, at least earnestly. <laughs> <laughs> you know when everybody says to each other, "You're my boy, blue." Uh, but yeah, there's like a lot of shit in this movie that has carried over, uh, and I still thought it was pretty fucking funny i mean like See, again I, i'm with you i'm with you this movie was funny yeah. I, I also who, thought who, it was... i should i know this is this am i am i now exposing myself is, is, is who what ratings are these these are fan ratings or these are like no critic so ratings? we go Rotten critic tomatoes ratings. this is a critic so that makes more sense and it has let me check it has a, a an audience score of 86 mm-hmm. which so draft that, day not doing not as, as hot, hot? With the audience draft day is a 65 well, so if there were to be a betting favorite going into this it would be old school. So that, but you're this, talking to so these the, the critics are saying it's a sixty, but you're talking to people who eighty seven percent agree with you. I've got I've got exactly. a guy right in the flesh right here. Exactly, a red blooded voting American. <laughs> and this is typically what happens with comedy movies, like stupid comedy movies. Critics oh, yeah. are like, oh, this is stupid. All of these blah, woke blah. critics it's no with animal. their lame stream media. <laughs> it's no Animal House. Like this is what I feel. I re- you read that Roger Ebert thing, and I'm like, oh, so he just well, he's that, just an old person who likes Animal House. Number one, I would say that it is consistent funny and number two he says that will ferrell is apparently like a uh a what nudist a, a let's find it compulsive, a nudist. compulsive nudist he only gets naked once in this movie yeah that's yeah, not that happens. he had one bad night that would have <laughs> been my yeah that would have been my review too i would have yeah. not enough nudity from will ferrell that, <laughs> right. that, was, that was my big takeaway rewatch one it. thing that is tough Could've going used back more naked will ferrell. Dick, cowards. Yeah. <laughs> one thing that is tough going back is watching the character of frank when you know what an alcoholic is, is like what through that lens is a little tougher. Listen, I've been it, watching Cheers recently, and boy, Norm, they really glaze over how much of an alcoholic Norm just is. Like, well, those cries guys just, for help. They just live in the bar. Right, exactly. <laughs> those people live in the bar. They're just there. They get off of work. They're there. They're ignoring their wife. Uh, anybody in their, their personal life, they're just at the bar. So There's yeah, an that, episode where Norm forgets that he's in the middle of a date, and he left the date to go to the bar and his date is waiting for him at the restaurant. No, that show should be called Alcoholism. <laughs> yes. That that is what that show should be called. It is why I mean, do uh, did either of you watch Mad Men? No. So there's a particular scene in Mad Men where an alcoholic is depicted relapsing and his kids that day had dropped off his dog because they were going to go with their mom for the day or whatever and he was just feeling bad about his life drank a ton in his office, goes downstairs at the office, opens the door to the office, and just lets the dog run away. And it's the most heartbreaking thing in the world. And I was like, man, like four years earlier or whatever, their depiction of alcoholism in movies was like, now, Frank, don't go doing beers at the party because we know what happens when you have a couple beers. And he's like, what? Me? Beers? Nothing. And then within an hour has ruined his marriage. Everything has fallen apart. Yeah, the, I, poor Frank. So my big takeaway from this watch of old school, it's been a while since I've seen it. The stakes are way higher than I remember them being. Like three people die in this movie. <laughs> Yo, the, there are three deaths wait, hang in on. this movie. So blue. Oh, blue, uh, in the end credits, yes. Kilborn. Yeah, it's true. And and Dean Pritchard. Yeah. And I gotta say, Kilborn and Pritchard. I mean, they go out together. I mean, that's yeah. That's, and it's like ha ha, whatever. But yeah. like. You tell people that three people die in old school, they're probably like, what? Yeah, it's like the a, fuck? It's like a Rambo movie. And yeah. this movie had two main antagonists, right? In Dean Pritchard and Craig Kilborn. One, Craig Kilborn's character is somebody who cheats on his girlfriend. Not cool. At face value, we're not supposed to like this cat. He also calls guys chicks. Yeah. Says well, good he says, talk. you're not a chick. Oh, that's he famously, reminds guys that they're not chicks. He yeah, doesn't call yeah. them chicks. He's big. Uh, He's he, big self awareness. He is king. loving the comedy of Ricky Gervais these days. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he does that, and then Dean Pritchard will bend any rule or break any rule he can, even racially stereotype, to make sure non students stay away from his school. Both of the characters are unlikable. They both fucking die at the end. <laughs> I, they're not yeah, characters. So that's a good, they're not so bad that I'm message. like. Don't you're be rooting for death for these characters. Don't be unlikable, or this is what happens. I mean, he is very mean to Monica. Monica. Monica Wang. Oh, at the end, is that her name? Well, she gets him. Well, it's Monica Chang, if you ask him. Yeah. Yes, he calls her Chang. Classic. Yeah. 
Not a good guy. Although, nope. who, what's my man's name? Also in Mad Men, the quintessential when this MF shows up on the show, you know it's going to be a good one guy. The the guy who plays the, I don't know, like assistant dean? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah the right yeah. hand man. Yeah. 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 They're He's actually like very, they're actually very good at paperwork, uh, yeah. ironically, that guy. That's yeah. quite the yeah. anomaly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, a, that's a funny ass movie. Uh, when this movie came out, though, I remember it was painted, and I was too young to want the nostalgia of going back to college but i remember it was painted and presented as this is every guy's dream like you go back to college and you get to live all of this stuff even though you're i don't know these guys are probably in their like late 30s or something like that yeah that idea to me now is would be my fucking nightmare if they were like hey you and all your buddies you're going to forget about your responsibilities and you're kind of going to go back to college. Yeah, but and you're not going to get any degrees or anything. You're just going to like <laughs> hey, you're going to like it's going to be sick, dude. You're going to wrestle <laughs> with some ladies. Yes. And I'm like, are we like dating these ladies? Like, how do, wh- how do we know these ladies? They're like, oh, and everybody is going to be. 20 years younger than you, you're right. going to feel really, really good. You're going to have... Uh, well, not everybody. You're going to have sex with a surprise high schooler. Oh, right. <laughs> uh. When that happened, I was like, oh, that's like they should have ended the movie here. Like He just had sex with like a 17-year-old. My guy, the movie yeah. starts with you a moved to a different Charita- state. Charitably a 17-year-old. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you moved to a different state and start a new life after you found out that you had sex with your boss's 17-year-old yeah. daughter. Like everybody gossip, everybody at work knows Walsh? about it. That's yeah, what I was just going to say. They're like, yeah, like yeah. hey, bud, here you stoop that kid. High <laughs> five. Yeah, there was never like a, what the fuck are you doing? It was like a... Congrats, pal. Yeah. We should have known when Matt Walsh and Artie Lang are the straight men to kick off the movie. We should have known this is gonna be this is gonna be some dicey characters. There's a big. This is a, uh, a big. Um, um, what's it called? Uh, Veep uh, episode because For real. the tall motherfucker is in Draft Day, and also there's another guy in Draft Day that's in Veep. Really, one of the millions of short white men that are in the. <laughs> War room, not me. Old school. Uh, I, no, you're, you got you got you're a different looking type of uh, of short white man than the kind they have in. That's fair. Um, Twenty years older, forty pounds. Well, so I wanted to go back to this. You guys are like, oh, this is my nightmare. You guys aren't married though. Like this is like this would be this would be great to separate from everyday life, work, kids. <laughs> wife like this yeah like but, that but like you said wife so aggressively <laughs> yeah like you Fucking shit no like why my wife no exactly like i'm with craig kilborn on this like i'm <laughs> like i'm like like i'm like oh man like get i i understand maybe where you guys don't separating from your life and going back to this because like that did seem awesome so you're just vince vaughn yeah i'm just yeah exactly i'm like yeah you know the baby look at the baby no when i was younger and I watched this movie. They make Luke Wilson's character out to be like a big wet blanket at the beginning of the movie where he comes home and he's like, uh, like, I just had a fucking long day at work and I just want to sleep. And there's 19,000 teenagers, teenage boys in my living room. This is the last thing I want right now. Oh, like, when he's at that, the house. I yeah. would, I, 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 that, that when I was in college, yeah, I would get back it, to my apartment. There would be a party I didn't know was happening, and I'd be like, I just want to fucking sleep. Yeah, Can we get is, this out here? I was that is a that. thousand percent my, me right now. 20 like, years old, I was saying that. <laughs> like, I come home, and my sister who lives here is here, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck? <laughs> so, like, if there was a bunch of strangers in my house after I just caught my long-term girlfriend having sex with, like, 16 other people when I was... Uh, on a work trip, yeah, I'd probably just want to go home and be depressed and go to bed. They're like, wait just 45 minutes, Snoop Dogg's going to come out. I'd be like, I don't believe that you got Snoop Dogg, and I don't know what you're actually going to do over the next 45 minutes. I don't want to be a part of any of this. Uh, This movie, by the way, starts in its first two minutes, has a an infamous hard F. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, which one was I one minute and fifty two seconds into the movie. I was gonna movie. say I remembered the line from the movie. I didn't realize it was ru- it was like they're like this is our first joke. Yeah, first they're, joke of the they're movie. They're like, how are we gonna reel people in? Yeah, how are we gonna do this? And it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a playful hard F. It was like a vitriolic hard F. Oh yeah, ending with a T. Yeah, not a three letter hard F. No. And this is as. The, the kicker on this, this is as a Ryan Adams song is playing, which I had not realized till I, I was watching. Make, I did not connect those dots. Yeah, we don't really do Ryan Adams anymore. He's been um, softly phased out for... There's a word for that. Yeah. 
Oh, well, the woke cancel mob. <laughs> came, like, I would love if there were like counter reviews from 2004 that were just like, oh, the woke Roger Ebert's going to come out and tell you that this isn't funny. Let me tell you, the taxi cab scene, really funny. <laughs> Yeah, that that's what I didn't remember about that joke. I remembered I remembered the line from the movie. I didn't remember it was like hit you over the head right away. Yeah. That oh, I didn't stunning. remember. And then like 15 seconds after that, a child is struck in the head by his father on the escalator. Bounces his head off the escalator handrail. Oh, right, 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 right. That I I didn't laugh as hard as I did maybe the first time I saw it, but there are some things that Maybe you just remember the joke, so it's not as funny just because you know it's coming and yep. everything. That one, I still had the kind of shock value laugh. That one got like, you. Holy smoke, I forgot that. I remember as a kid, like, rewinding to see that kid's head bounce off the railing, like, <laughs> yes. four times. Dude, that's some, it may contain spoilers, that's some, like, Howard Hamlin shit yeah. in Better Call Saul. Um, the the best character, though, for me as I rewatched this, was Dean Pritchard. That's a great character. He's a great character, like, for the purpose of the movie. My favorite line of the movie might be, do you see that one guy? He's, like, 90. <laughs> <laughs> the one guy's, like, 90. Uh, the- a number of things did not age well in this movie, but one thing that did was Rob Corddry, because somehow he looks older in this movie than he does now. Oh, yeah, yeah. he's got, he had, like, a little, like, tuft of hair, like, hanging yes, on. yeah. Yeah, there was... It's one of those situations where, like, he's really hanging on to his youth, and and by doing that looks a thousand times older than he should. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Another character I really like is um, there's a character named Weensy, and he is one of the pledges. Weensy. He would absolutely die with the... Uh, there's. Is there only one scene that we could call the penis scene in this movie? Yeah, I think that's right. No, there could be two, because there's Will Ferrell with his penis out. Yes, and Leo Remini famously says, hey, Frank, it's a little cold oh, out yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, yep. tough thing to say... In the car with your friend who just married this guy. Yeah. That's a little uh, kind of like a ricochet shot a little bit. I played by, by the way, Marissa played by the inimitable Perry Reeves. Just absolute legend. Introduction, I think, to a lot. Did you watch Entourage? Yes. Well, I was. uh, What else is she in? She's the she's Mrs. Ari Gold in Entourage. What, What else is she in? She's in Noah Baumbach's first movie, Kicking and Screaming which is a good movie, but it is not the best movie titled Kicking and Screaming because there is a Will Ferrell and Mike Ditka, and Mike Ditka vehicle <laughs> called Kicking and Screaming. And that movie, have you seen that one? No. Yo, show your kid that movie. Okay. It's, incre- it's a soccer movie. Great. Will Ferrell and Mike Ditka. How long Ditka. is it? Is it at least like an hour and a half? I'll stick my kid in front of that. That's fine. Good. <laughs> I said, take up 90 minutes of my day. Watch it with him. It rocks. Okay. Mike Ditka actually, I think, might be canceled, though, if people... Already watched that movie now. One of the most stunning things in this movie, I thought, was uh, the casting of Leah Remini as Vince Vaughn's wife, because I was fully expecting Vince Va- Vince Vaughn's wife to be just like a disgusting person based off of the way that how much he hates his wife. He's the ultimate anti wife guy. Anti wife oh, guy. Yeah. So much so, like screaming at Will Ferrell's character to not marry the bride as she's walking down the aisle. One and of he's the, like essentially like on a hot mic, and he's like, "No, don't do it." One of the great lines, though, <laughs> no, no, he coughs in the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Coming off that though, when he says, "It takes an angel to give away your sweetheart," <laughs> yeah. so good. No, it takes a t- what does it take? It takes a, a something to give away an angel. Give away, yeah, it's give you're, away an angel. You're a real sweetheart, and then he winks at him. I think that that <laughs> unfortunately, that's the kind of charm that a lot of people aspire to after seeing that movie. Like, if there's one character that people want to be. And I say this as a, I was probably 13 or 14 when I saw that movie. I was like, ooh, I want to be the wise guy who, when I need to, can charm can an old man. Yeah. yeah, can win over a, an yeah, old yeah, man yeah. like that. That's a good skill, though. Yeah. You don't and think he, that's a good skill? Th- that's a, I a mean, useful, what, that's a useful faced? skill. <laughs> no, yeah, but like, you know, <laughs> like, mean, just like when you got to rescue yourself. Locations. That's yeah. true. Three and a half million dollars. Three and a half million dollars. That the government knows about. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I think that's what? a good skill. Vince Vaughn's character might be the best. I also liked the scene. This is horrible when he so he famously will not cheat on his wife. Yeah, and when he tells the girl that he will not do you gotta that, kiss. I was just gonna say he that's, oh, that's kind of right, right. there was a there was a he kind of like stopped it, that's but yeah. there right. was but there was yeah there was some some lip contact. But he yeah. does say, 
<laughs> Why don't you leave your number though in case anything happens to <laughs> my wife? Honestly though, like if we're power horrible, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but funny. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but if we're, and if funny, we're yeah. power ranking like of the three friends here, if we're power ranking the worst things that they do in this movie, I think Vince Vaughn comes in like last, like most harmless, quick little peck. Uh, Luke Wilson has sex with a maybe 16 or 17-year-old. Yeah, right, year old, right, right. Banging 14-year-olds. Right. And Will Ferrell's out here committing, like, sex crimes by w- running around naked in public Luke, through the town square. Let's not forget, Luke Wilson also commits sexual assault, like, five minutes into the movie with the coffee thing. With the coffee thing? He spills coffee on oh, right. oh, yeah, 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 Nicole. Yeah. On what's-her-name, yeah. Ellen Pompeo. Yeah. yeah he's right which, up the dress. Yeah, I hadn't remembered that. Yeah, I so say. I think Vince Vaughn comes out the cleanest here. Vince Vaughn is definitely the best of the three, although he's like really all talk. Frank is clearly ill. Like something is wrong with Frank. Well, he went to he went to therapy at one point. That's right. He and he we were out at the Olive Garden for dinner, which was lovely. It was lovely. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a. And then goes into like a four minute monologue about the <laughs> about the waitress's underwear. So is that do you think that's scripted? That can't be scripted. I don't think so. That can't have been scripted. He must have just gone off the cuff. Maybe cup she's largely got, gone off the cuff. Maybe there. she's got something that I don't even know yeah, about. Yeah, that was the best part. <laughs> and again, did that that really struck a chord with like a young man watching that movie because I don't know like what any types of underwear yeah. was. So I was like, Cisco has a has one about that word that you just <laughs> said. I wouldn't be able to say the word back. I'm not positive what it's called. I definitely identify with the maybe something that yeah, I don't what know are, about. What are these things? And how do they clasp together and then unclasp? Because I'm, I'm confused about all that. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I, I do think that Will Ferrell has uh, one of the best lines in this movie that I totally forgot about, yeah. which was... Uh, Let's see. If you screw this up, I'll kill you. Not that one. That's famously not Will Ferrell. One of Will Ferrell's other lines? <laughs> uh, no, when he get, when his wife tells him that she wants a divorce, his, oh. his reaction is, is, well, if I don't get a hold of you, keep on keeping on. Keep oh. on trucking. Doesn't he also say, <laughs> keep on trucking? Keep on trucking. Doesn't he also say, like, like a real divorce? Divorce, yeah. divorce? Yeah. yeah. Like a divorce, A divorce? real divorce? Yeah. Uh, yeah, just like the, uh, if I don't get a hold, if this is like the last time we talk, like, it, it's just like a very clean break. Like, divorces aren't very ugly proceedings that take months. He's like, well, if I don't, if I don't get a hold of you again. That one's got to be, that's got to be a pretty clean divorce, though, that one. Oh, they, yeah. You, you they get, were, that's an annulment. They, they're still they, that's that's an annulment. That's, yeah. an, that's an annulment. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, like, we got married within weeks. My alcoholic husband relapsed and has been estranged and is now yeah. leading a fraternity. <laughs> that thing is annulled in oh, two yeah. seconds. That's true. Uh, one of my, the thing that well, I she still get She still gets 50% in that scenario, right? Yeah, what, what's, yeah, what's in the, the Trans Am? What's yeah, what's, yeah, that's a good point. What is what is she getting? Yeah, she out of did it? get the know. house. That thing's not exactly street legal. No, <laughs> that's right. No, keep that in the deal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know what the the uh, oh yeah she the got legal the house. proceedings are. Yeah, I think she gets the house. Yeah, because Will Ferrell famously stays at the at yep. yeah. Uh, Luke Wilson gets a really raw deal here. Oh yeah, he, they're like you're finally free, and then within like three days, he is living with like his two best friends, and uh, they're like, he's living with people that he doesn't get to have sex with. Yeah, like if 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 you're working on Frank, absolutely, you have him stay with you, yeah. and you get him on his feet and everything. To have somebody who is legitimately spiraling stay with you and your job seemingly is to contribute to like babysit him basically and right. make it worse yes right just like all right now you have to so this guy's been having a really rough time he's been hitting the bottle pretty hard you got to make sure that you plan a party with him every single night uh yeah i mean that it's it, it is funny like uh luke wilson's character's life implodes and then just gets continuously gets way worse. <laughs> my favorite, one of my favorite quotes at the time, and it's a good one that you can still quote. I don't do it too much anymore. Is uh, you're crazy. Wait, no, that's a megaphone. Fuck. <laughs> I'm crazy. I like you, but you're crazy. <laughs> good stuff. Yeah. That that's is good. definitely worth the six hundred dollars. That's a that's a nice little effect. Yeah, we were doing. <laughs> We were doing uh, monster voices the last episode of Brunch. It was, this is, that's cool. We that's really like, had no rundown, just, uh, just doing some robot voices. No, but I, I used to be a big fan. I mean, I had a, 
I have a deepish voice. I would actually say that of the three of us, I probably have the highest voice of of these three fellows, Jones, yeah, was, you especially. I was but. surprised. I was uh, uh, Blackburn's got some bass over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I definitely oh, yeah, have Pete. a deeper voice. Nobody ever expects this voice from this body. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. But I used so. to do. I used to be big into the. <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> I like you. That wasn't but even an effect. It's a good, good, good impression. Yeah, good for yeah. you. Real cameo so, by Sean William Scott. He must have cost a lot of money at the time. That guy was. I mean, that he was, was hot shit. That guy was hot shit. But you know what? Coming off a road trip, maybe Toddy Phil was like, hey, buddy, you want to let's get the band back together. And he's like, we're doing other movies like, oh, I'm doing a movie with Vince Vaughn and Will Ferrell. But how would you like to but be? But I got to say, there scene. are heavy hitters in this in this movie, like all across Andy the Dick board. Andy Dick was very hot shit at the time. Yeah, that was right. like, that's I a mean, legitimate get. Yeah, that, that might be the thing that has aged the most poorly is Andy Dick being involved with this film. Yeah. Way to give 110%. The fact that like the hard F word was dropped in this movie and it didn't come from Andy Dick yeah. is it didn't shocking. Come in that Big scene. upset. Yeah. I mean, I, think I do like how he just says somebody made a bad mistake. Yeah. <laughs> like not not like, oh, you fucked up. Like somebody made a bad mistake. I think this is probably a movie where they had to, if there was a spot where they could not swear, they would do it to fend off uh, any NC-17 type of rating. They're like, all right, we have... An old man you think this dying. Was, you think this was close to NC seventeen? At the hands of two bare-chested women, we've got uh, we got to use this hard F. That is non-negotiable. <laughs> we need to start the movie. Yeah. with I a mean, hard F. I did remember the movie being way more raunchy than it actually Me too. is. Me like, too. Uh, I, there's the scene as, in the beginning with Vicky, right? Juliet Lewis's character. Mm -hmm. So oh, there's that scene. Are they are they naked when they come out of the bathroom? I think the guy and the girl is, a right? Is the girl just topless? Scene? And there's like, they're showing porn true. in the beginning. Yeah, true. Then you have the two chicks with blue, and then that's, yeah, that's, that's really it. it. Yeah. A qualm I have with that scene where... And well, and Will Ferrell. Where he catches true. her in the act is he walks in and he's like, hey, what's going on? You watching porn? And she's like... Uh, I didn't think you were going to be here. And he's like, what's going on? Is this crazy? And there's like a commotion. And then these two blindfolded people <laughs> walk out and they're feeling around. They're like, hey, sex time, blah, blah. And they're acting as if nothing's going on. I'm like, your ears aren't covered. You can hear that there is. Well, but they don't know who this individual yeah, is. Yeah, because they think it's a gangbang. Right. So, so uh, maybe they think they're a like strange voice is playing. Well, a strange yeah, voice or like that role they're, playing. Yeah, role playing that the thing is like. All Big right, now someone's gonna someone's gonna <laughs> come in and catch me in the act. That's what they think. I guess. I don't know. Maybe they were chowing down on the orgy buffet. I don't know. Like they were just they were they weren't fully paying attention. They were eating the wings or something like that. I don't think people who are involved with orgies are like, ooh, strange voice. Maybe we shouldn't uh yeah, hey, pipe get involved. Down. But yeah. it's piped out. But strangers it's not, here. I don't want to say it's like an altercation, but something is afoot, clearly. Could have been role play. Yeah. Uh while we're on the topic. Are, are we cool with Will Ferrell's know. character uh, yeah. joining in on the orgy at the end of the movie? Because like he has like two friends, and one of them is the guy who let him stay at his house. What, is he going to fuck his ex-girlfriend who sent that guy's life into a tailspin? Good Wait, point. tell me again. This is at the end of the at movie? At the end of the movie at the grocery at store. At the grocery store. Oh, he runs, yes, in, he runs yes. into Vicky. I yes. think her name is Vicky. Is that kosher? That. No, so that's not kosher. I thought you were saying, does he know that he's getting into the orgy scene. I don't know if he he's, definitely uh, knows. Is he aware of that? Yeah, because they make jokes about it in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, so that's like true. Vince oh, Vaughn's yes. character is like, you should be so right, lucky so that not you're only, with a sexually enlightened woman. So he's, uh, that's true. So now he's in that scene and he's, and he's hooking up with his and buddy's his, girlfriend. Right. Ex-girlfriend. Like one of his two friends. Yeah, tough move. And the one who let him basically get his life that's back not guy, together. That's mm. not guy code. No, that's definitely it's not. not. That's not guy code. That's a chick move. Yeah. And you're not a chick. <laughs> Uh, a, a sequel. But is it okay because uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Mitch's character has moved on, and to Ellen Pompeo, who a uh, fantastic lady. Yeah, is she? Because I kind of looked at this and I said, "Ugh." I mean, she was put, she was putting the moves on him. Oh uh, yeah, no, she was. Oh and no, she was definitely initiating. Like, hi, I'm interested in cheating on yes. the the man that I'm seeing. Yes, I like definitely to, did. She's like, hey. He, if he says anything like good toxie out there, he got that from me. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is my thing. Uh, did you know a sequel was written to Old School in 2006 by Old School co-writer Scott Armstrong, but it was turned down by Will Ferrell and Vince Vaughn. It was going to be spring break themed, but Ferrell was quoted as saying it, quote, just felt like it was repeating. I think they avoid some major hangover stuff here. 
Yeah, and I mean that is some shocking news. Well, the most, sh the least shocking yeah, part I of that is that uh, um, Luke Wilson was like, "Sign me up." <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, there's no mention. He's of Luke like, Wilson. I'm in. Yeah. Vince Vaughn and Will Ferrell famously got into other things, but it is rich of Will Ferrell to be like, "Oh, this is this is too similar." When he plays the same fucking character for like twelve straight years. Right. The end of the quote though it was like. But watch though, we'll probably make it. It'll probably be great or something like that. Yeah, well, they'll but, probably make it at some point down the line. The uh, comedy, comedy the sequels. Older, the older they get, might lend itself to being more funny. Funnier. I've yeah. thought forever there is not enough old people comedy. I've had an idea. Well, for Tom, Bra Tom Brady's moving in on that. Yo, I am all in on the eighty for Brady. <laughs> Tom Brady is going to corner that market. They, Just a bunch of old folks watching football. Yeah, there has been uh, that market has been tapped quite a bit recently, though. I mean, there's well the bucket list, yeah, the bucket list recently. Um, yeah, there's uh, Wild Hogs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Mamma Mia, even to ex to an extent. That's yeah, that's the, you are right. That's kind of old people territory. There's book Club, which we fucking loved. Yeah, Book Club, bunch of horny bunch olds, of, bunch of olds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. bunch of bunch of horny olds that think that uh, what's his name, uh, Andy Garcia is just like the hottest shit that has ever <laughs> walked the earth. So, yeah, old people movies are, are in vogue. Making a comeback. All right, yeah. well, now maybe they got to strike while the iron's yeah. hot. You've just driven into fuckville. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. Do we have any uh, final thoughts on old school? Uh, do I have any final thoughts? Did you see? Did you guys watch Lost? There was one more character I wanted to bring up. Did you guys watch Lost? Yes. Did no. you see who the boss is on, in this movie? Is John, oh, is John Locke. That's who that... Wow, that's crazy. But he looks a lot different than it he's is. He's got like a mustache. Jo uh, that, that might be it. That's just, it. I think that's all it is. Otherwise, it, otherwise he's Locke from Lost, but he's the boss. John Locke a little more gray-haired in Lost? Or he, might no? be, he might be a little older. He's in a wheelchair. Uh, Spoiler alert. I never finished Lost. I didn't finish Lost either, but I but I did for like two seasons. I very much liked it. I just Then know the that third season I like hated, and then I never finished. After the Not Penny's Boat thing may contain spoilers, I was like... All right, I guess that wasn't Penny's boat. Yeah. And then I was just kind of done. But when I was watching it, I was all in for a second. John Locke is the boss. All right. Uh, my my last note is that uh, Vince Vaughn's character never smokes a cigarette until the scene where he has to be athletic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which I thought was kind of funny. Still oh. holding. We should, yeah, we should quickly hit on the thing that they have them do at the end where they're like, in order for you to remain a fraternity... You have to do all these things. You gotta go. Like you gotta compete in the Olympics. J James Carville. You gotta do all these wild things. My favorite part of that of that part of the movie was when Frank jumps through the hoop of fire, <laughs> catches fire, and immediately just screams, "Oh no! Oh no!" <laughs> And yeah, then he takes he, off his suit and he's all like he's his burned. skin is all burned. Yeah, but he has all of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> he's just red. He's yeah. not even burned. He's just red. Uh, yeah, I think I mean, the final act of this movie is completely incomprehensible, but it is very funny. Yeah. So I guess final thoughts on old school is I knew I wasn't going to like it as much as I liked it when it came out. And I wasn't going to think that it was revolutionary. A lot of it isn't funny but a lot of it is funny uh, i thought i think most of it the majority of it is funny it's pretty funny i don't like i guess i'd have to go back and watch a lot of movies that came out of that time to see where it would fit well, start in. with start with like road trip did you like it better than road not to do like a whole nother tomato fights but like did you like it better than road trip i mean road trip was really i, I mean i, I haven't I, seen road trip in i remember time, seen road, trip I remember road trip i remember thinking was very funny i mean i remembered old school as being legitimately one of like the five funniest movies ever so yes so I don't know. I, I didn't remember Road Trip being that way. But yeah, Tom Green and Andy Dick. What's his face really had a type? Todd know. Phillips. I mean, I would still say even after a rewatch that this is like a fucking classic comedy. Like a lot of stuff has aged well. And obviously a good amount of stuff hasn't aged well, but it's like mainly throwaway stuff. The funny stuff is still aged well. Yeah. Good talk. <laughs> See you out there. I'm telling you, it really worked its way into... The lexicon, is that right? The lexicon? lexicon, yeah. Really worked its way into the lexicon. Okay, let's get to Draft Day, which came out in 2014. Pete was saying that he remembered the roll up, the rollout to this movie, mm -hmm. the lead up. Oh yeah, I don't remember any of that. Yeah, I had to go back and watch the trailer. It yesterday. was, uh, it was a very, very heavily promoted film, like around football season. 
Not so the like, draft, around the season? Around the season, okay. yeah. And like you couldn't escape the commercials, and everybody's reaction was like, what the fuck is this movie? <laughs> Which, I mean, very fair. It, it had a horrible uh, trailer campaign. It was very, very corny. Uh, people were like, how the fuck did they get Kevin Costner? How the fuck is this cast so good when this movie looks awful? Uh, and I just remember the, the reception being like, it's not that bad. So, Which I think is fair. This movie tells the tale of Sonny Weaver Jr., who is the general manager of the Cleveland Browns. You see, he had really pulled some major strings in his days working for the San Francisco 49ers, but he was hired to lead the Browns, and upon getting to Cleveland, he fired his dad, who is the head coach. So he's got Belo- a beloved head coach. Beloved head like, coach. The people of Cleveland love this. Even guy. though, again, I'm poking holes in all these movies. The movie starts with like a radio scene. They're like, it's draft day in Cleveland, and the Browns are bad every year. And you're like, okay, cool. So this is rooted in reality. Right. This is a real true to life. But then movie. they make references to like, could you believe he fired the beloved coach? I was like, so they were horrible, but people liked the coach. That's not how horrible teams work. Yeah, it's a good it's point. True. <laughs> People like Bill Belichick these days, so that's a, you, right. play, you can blow but, you can blow holes. But he in that earned theory. goodwill. Goodwill. Yes, true. The the Cleveland Browns coach, Mister Weaver, apparently yeah. didn't do anything. No, they definitely yeah. haven't won anything because right. Dennis Leary's throwing around his Super Bowl right. ring. So they in got, everybody's face. They got a hot new coach. It's Dennis Leary. He's but, got a Super Bowl ring. He loves jamming down people's. <laughs> he is the coach and not the GM or. Uh, Sonny Weaver's dad was the coach. So right. like, maybe he did the best that he could right. with what was given to him. Yes. And they just didn't win. It was the previous GM that really chunked it for the, the Browns. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. So uh, Sonny has the seventh overall pick. But, but you, you just hang on. You just glaze. He basically killed his dad when he fired his dad. Oh, yeah. His, his dad then dies of a broken yeah. heart. He basically, yeah. like, he, yeah, he, he killed sent, his dad. He sentenced him to death by going <laughs> to hang out with his wife. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Vince Vaughn tried to warn you about this in old school, <laughs> right. but he, but yeah, he, but that's exactly what he did. He he sentenced him to death. He basically killed his dad when he fired his dad. It's like you, he, his two choices were: he can either die doing what he loves, or he can die at home with his bitch of a wife. Right, <laughs> dude. Right. Bad character. The the the. I think that there is a tendency, specifically for like very for what would classically be considered guy movies, where people don't like a woman character, and I'm like. That's just bec- you're just mad that there's like a woman on yeah, the screen. What a, a lot of times, what a nag, right? And <laughs> a lot of times, like Janice in The Sopranos, Janice is an awesome character, she's the worst person, right? But she's a super important character. Even Skylar from Breaking Bad, it was like, Oh, oh Skylar's an awesome Skylar, character. How dare you? Like, what the fuck? Like, I what just want to see dudes it's, killing yeah, each other. It sucks that like this, this, this wife is not wanting her husband to be involved in a criminal enterprise and is voicing some concerns over it. Yeah, uh, the, how dare she? The Mother in this movie is maybe a good person, but a terrible character. The mother in uh, oh, well, she's trying to draft yeah, yeah, she's trying to spread. I thought you were talking about Jennifer. She Gardner shows up for a the second. day of the draft she's and trying is trying like, to spread ashes on the field. They I are, got some ashes. I'd like to dump here. They're like, we're like, trying to watch last second tape here, <laughs> mom. We're trying to scout these prospects, and you're trying to spread dad's ashes. What are you doing? Yeah, a lot of weird decisions saved for like the hours leading up to draft day, such as the hiring of a new intern. Oh, uh, we'll get who to shows that. Shows up for his first day on the job on draft day. We'll get to that. So the the setup of the movie. Sonny is GM of the Browns. He's got the seventh overall pick. He is offered the first overall pick by the Seahawks in what? I didn't realize this till like my 100th watch of the movie. He's initially offered it on very fair terms. The Seahawks say to go from seven to one, give us your first next year and a third round pick. Yeah. Yes. That's an that's a completely fair right. deal. Oh, yeah. So seven, a future first, and a future third to go to one. When people trade up to they number absolutely one, should they, yeah. they give up like six draft picks. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the GM that or the owner who is impeccably cast, the owner of the Browns in this movie looks like such oh, yes. an NFL owner. Oh, yeah. He's that was one of my notes. Old. He's got like the short, like the short hair, but still like Covering his head, but very, very low, stuck to his fucking kind of balding yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, The glasses at all times. He's got the posture. Anyway, he makes him take this deal. Seahawks jack up the price. He ends up trading a bajillion picks. So they now have the number one overall pick, and they don't know who they're going to take. There's all sorts of chaos. He makes this deal, by the way, without telling anybody on his staff that he's doing it. This is like... 
uh, this is like how Don Sweeney drafts, I feel like. Like, this is like, this is like, you know, what the Bruins do. They're like, wait a minute, what? They just figure it out on the day of. We have, I don't 13, know. We have 13, 14, and 15. What, what, what are we going to do with these? We knew the characters, though, that they ended up drafting. The Bruins? No, that the Browns. Oh, oh yeah. Brown, the Browns took. Yeah, uh, true. At the, least the Browns guys were on the board. The, yeah, Brown, yeah, yeah. Right, the Browns took Mac, and we were like, oh, a little high, but they got they got Mac. Yeah, they reached, okay. but he played it all. They got a, State. a, I mean, a protected yeah. first round pick. Yeah, at right. Least. Right. Yeah. That's Ray Jennings. Point. I was like, oh, I, I wouldn't have gone running back, but yeah, I know you. Uh, FSU. Yeah. His right. dad is. Uh, his dad is Terry Crews. Okay, I know yeah, who yes. that guy is. His dad is Sergeant Shepherds. It's Arian Foster. Arian yeah. Foster, yeah. I Don didn't... Sweeney is pulling people who aren't in that movie. Uh, it's true. That's a good point. I did not know that uh, Arian Foster was in this movie. Oh, I, yeah. I That's saw... Ray Jennings. Yeah, I saw I saw him, and I was like, is that Arian Foster? But Arian Can't Fo- be. But, it, but he, he's playing like... He's supposed to be playing like a 22-year-old. Right, right? but, but Arian, he looks like it. Arian Fo- well, he does play probably younger than he is, but watching the movie, Arian Foster must have been 30-something. Right. Well, he yeah. was like in the he was a noted NFL player and he was like a sort of like a latish bloomer. Yes. Arian Foster. I think that's right. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he was a high pick. He was what, like third, fourth round pick, something like that. that sounds right. I yeah. want to say that he was like lower than that. They do introduce, though. So they, the Browns don't know who they're taking. They are legitimately pulling tape on prospects. Well, the, everybody assumes they're taking Bo Callahan because right. Bo Callahan is the the Heisman Consensus, winning quarterback out of Wisconsin. Pick. He's the great. They say this at one point. I forget who says it in the movie, but they say this at one. Point, he's the best I knew prospect it. quarterback seen? prospect since I, Andrew Luck. I knew oh. it. I knew it. Well, Arian Foster was undrafted. Undrafted. Wow. Hey now, well, so I'm confusing why. him with maybe Dominic Davis or he wanted Damian to, Pierce. Some he wanted to experience Texas a draft day. That's right. His he first said, draft I've, nev- day. "I've never done a draft day. I want to do it." Love that. Yep. That's what Marty St. Louis said at the NHL draft this year. Really? He said, took me 25 years, but here I am, my first draft day. I wouldn't have laughed. I, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big not laugher in scrums. I, I'm, if it is legitimately funny. It wasn't like, a scrum. He was you on gotta, stage. You're in a down zone. Okay, so it's, that's like a little quip thing, but yep. it's like, all right, like, I'll handle the humor yeah. around here. <laughs> yeah, that's not your department. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you say the quote, I'll put it down there, and then I'll... I'll, I'll sprinkle some, yeah. <laughs> I'll sprinkle some cute stuff around yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Funny. That's how this works. But uh, yeah, they they're introducing the prospects one by one, and the first prospect that they have you meet is basically guilting you, or like kind of guilting the Browns into taking this guy. Like if you don't take this person, it's Vontae Mack, and uh, he is the his he's taking his orphaned uh, nephews. Mm-hmm. to go tumbling and he's like hey mr weaver hope you can draft me i need that number one overall pick money right uh like my sister's dead <laughs> right. bye-bye i'm stuck <laughs> watching like, oh. i'm stuck watching these two he's by the way he's carting these kids around yeah to gymnastics or tumbling or yeah. whatever on, on draft dra- on draft yeah like the guy's about to get drafted he's carting these kids oh, and around the, and the, they say he's like uh, are you in new york for the draft and he's like no even though i'm a top prospect I'm watching it at home because my dying grandmother yeah. cannot make it. I'm to currently New York. I'm currently shuttling them around in my 2001 Nissan Ultima, and the check engine light is on. Uh, I could use some money. Uh, please draft me. But Bye. he's like, but he's like, I can't go low because at the time he thinks the Browns are picking seven, right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Vontae Mack, played by Chadwick Boseman. Yeah. And he's like, well, I can't fall lower than seven because I can't afford that. Which, like, you can afford that. Oh, yeah, I want to... Yeah. Wait, th- what year is this movie? 2014. 14. Oh, so this is post... This is post Sam Bradford. So rookies aren't making what they... Well, whatever, but, like the, the point, the but like the point is, like, you can you can raise two kids on the 15th pick of the draft salary. Right. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, he's like, I can't afford I can't afford to fall to 7 to 15. If this takes like, place... No, like, you, de- you definitely can. If this takes place in, like, 2003 or something, he calls him up and he's like, hey, just want to say, I really don't like Cleveland, but... <laughs> Right. Someone's going to take me in the first round, so suck my dick. Bye, coach. <laughs> and he's like, I'm the coach. And that's the end of the call. Right. I also feel like if uh, a, a a draft prospect called uh, a GM's personal cell phone yeah. first thing in the morning and was like, draft me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> that would like immediately get you thrown off their board. Well, yeah, exactly. And Kevin Costner is like, wait, how'd you get this number? Right. Yeah. He's like, you gave it to me at the combine. I do like this. Though. And he's like, yeah, don't, I, didn't ever, I never wanted you to call that. What are you doing? Right. Dante Max got... 
And if he's a calling you, good. if he's calling you on draft day, and you're like not a member of the team, just think about how fucking annoying he's going to be with your cell phone number if he is a member of the team. Uh, right. That's a good point. You see practice today, coach? A <laughs> big time red flag. I was good out there, huh? Constantly, yeah, texting you annoying memes and things like that. Yeah, that's like going on a first date and then waking up the next morning and getting three missed calls from yeah. the girl that you went on a first date with. Calls. He's- Right. Yeah, calls. he calls. Yeah, he doesn't text them. Yeah, you don't want that. He's no. got uh he's got a great phone case though. He's got <laughs> oh, brass oh, the brass knuckle. knuckles. Yeah, that is that he means business. Like I think I think if you know he's anything a, about Vontae for, Mack, but for a guy like a great kid for and, a guy who's falling whose stock is falling because of like character some character issues or whatever. No, that's Ray Jennings. Ray Jennings because he got in the fight, but yeah. what's Vontae Max deal? Why is he uh just that he's a linebacker? He's really? A little, he's just okay. a little overlooked. Yeah, they're like, Yeah, Patrick Willis. Good top 10 linebacker, but is that necessarily where you want to but spend? The brass knuckle. He means business. This guy's not fucking around. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's tough. I think if they saw that phone case, they'd be like, oh, this guy's in trouble. Yes, man. Right. He, uh, then the other prospect, yeah, Ray Jennings, we talked about Arian Foster and Bo Callahan, who is just a real dick. And his agent is P. Diddy. Yep. Which I like they had a a super agent aspect to this to this movie yeah it's like a super slipping. agent who only had apparently like one client yo i'll tell you what if you if you got the number one overall pick that is your only client that's like, true fuck those other losers but he's very polished he's got the kid very polished there yeah, is all very it's all very you know surface level answer this question ask him about his dad mm. like yeah p diddy's got all that stuff uh ironed out but it may it all makes bo callahan and that whole setup a little less a little less likable a lot less likable. they should have went back to the well and had jay moore play uh, <laughs> yes. they yeah should have had that that would have been hilarious there's a lot of uh weight room scenes in this movie and jennifer garner somehow isn't in them because i'll tell you what if anybody has to carry something in this movie she is the only straight man in the whole movie, it is a bunch of clowns trying to again the day of the draft pulling tape on players. Yes, and like they have no idea what they're doing. But uh, she, and then Dennis Leary's character has like the audacity to be like, "Honey, what do you even yeah. do here?" And she's like, "What?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the like, mom asked her to get her coffee at one point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the she's, mom. She's very, she's very talked down. But to. Uh, she is stupping Sonny Weaver Jr. And it's on the DL, but the it's beginning not. of the movie, right? I mean, Dennis Leary is running around that building, telling <laughs> everybody, anybody who will listen, "Hey, we should draft Ray Jennings." And Allie and Sonny are getting it on. The, the like every time in this movie too, they're like, "Oh, we can't find Sonny and uh, and what's her name's character." Allie. They must be in a closet together. Yeah, they're just alone. Yeah, they just always find them in a closet. They hold up. <laughs> that is hold where they up are. Ta- talking about her pregnancy because she's right. pregnant. You're right. Right. So but- she's pregnant, and she says to him, "There's some refer- mention of she had told him that she was pregnant, and she is mad because of his reaction." Right. Mm-hmm. What was his reaction? It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah. Like, like, what, what What was his reaction? Like, I don't know. What do you? What's they, your theory on what his reaction was? I don't know, but how the fuck is this guy reacting that like the mother of his child is now not talking to him? Like they, they I don't know, they just kind of gloss over that like, look, the reaction could have been better. I know. But what do you want? It's draft day. <laughs> like <laughs> he's got a lot on his plate. I, I just assume that it was a, a confused reaction. He didn't know how to feel. His father has just died. He's got draft day coming no, up. No, Doesn't know. You don't he's think he was. His father has just died at his hands. That's true. He just killed. He his killed, father. killed his father. Yeah. He's <laughs> he's dealing with the. Uh, he's, he's grappling with the loss and the guilt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I look. I I'm with Pete. I just I interpret it as a bit a bit of a like a miffed reaction. Maybe not the most supportive. But yeah, maybe maybe it was more nefarious than that. I don't know. You know, I've what? never knocked a girl up, but I imagine that there could be some conflicting feelings. Yeah. Upon finding out that news. But I I mean, I think that even if you don't know what to do, are are you at least saying keeping some oh sort my of god, poker face? That's like, oh my god. Even oh my god in a hug. <laughs> oh my god in a hug yeah, is but at that's, some positive. But vibes. that's 364 days a year, Deej. That's yeah, not, this is draft day. This is draft day. <laughs> that's right. So it's fucking time to watch tape. They haven't <laughs> watched they haven't watched any tape yet. <laughs> So he's got tape to watch. <laughs> got to get up. What if he like overslept on draft day? He wakes up. It's so, noon. He's like, oh, my God. The so draft did that, is in eight also, hours and I did that confuse tape. you guys? Also, not to victim blame, but when did she when did she tell him? When did she break the news? Yeah. Was like, it at like his dad's funeral? Right. 
That we we got to have more context. I mean, yeah. we you couldn't have sat on this for another day, <laughs> right? Like, come on, you had to tell him now. Out of I all traded the up days? for the number one overall pick. Well, that ain't the biggest surprise that's coming to Cleveland. Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's off trading for the number one pick. Good, because you got to keep a job. You're gonna. I be got a, a blue yeah. ship <laughs> prospect for you. <laughs> 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 did they, did the timeline of the day throw you guys off? I was surprised that the draft was already in prime time then. Because like they show it, they're like, yeah. oh, it's 12 hours till the draft or whatever. And I'm like, so it's the night before? So this is a Thursday. This is a Thursday night. But it's, it's Goodell's America, bro. That started that that long ago? The draft has been in prime time that yeah. long? Yeah, I mean, the draft has always been a big deal. The draft has been in prime time the since, draft used I want to say, 2012. It used to be Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, okay, that, so those were the good days. Those were good. I don't hate that it's in primetime. I just I'm I surprised that it's that old. I'm surprised that it's been in primetime that long. Where in this movie, I mean, if it, it was even all if it leading up to the and Sunday, isn't it still primetime? No, no, it was no, no, no. In the day, really? it was like noon. It was noon, wow, okay. and it rocked. We would hunker down. As far down. as I can remember, draft has always been at night. Yeah, so maybe it's longer than I think. It, yeah. so that's but that when... threw me off. I'm like, oh, it's the night before. Because, again, I had seen this movie many times, but never sober. So little details like that I was taking in for the first time. And I said, oh, I I didn't realize that it was already in primetime. Yeah, point. I was more surprised at how much running around there is, like in like doing other tasks with like four hours left to go to the draft. Oh, I'll, I'll say even during the draft, if this were real life, None of these picks would have gotten made. Every team would have been the 2003 Vikings. The clock would have expired. Yeah. They are having full blown conversations yeah. while, all, while on the clock. And I'll, this will be the first time I reference this awesome video that I didn't know about till like 10 days ago. But the Chargers have the best social media and YouTube game. It's insane. They come up with all this great content and they have a video of their GM, Tom Telesco, oh. watching draft day and. Just it's like a reaction video. So you told me I I did not actually remember to watch this, but you told me to watch this. Yeah. And Tom Telesco watches draft day and just like picks it apart. Yeah. It's, in like the real world NFL environment. It's incredible. But like some of the trade negotiation scenes when they're on the clock, he's like, Yeah, this uh like respectfully, this just couldn't happen. You right. have like framework of things that you might want to do. This would do. already have been done days ago. Yeah, and you the call framework them, you say, of the deal. Like, yeah. Hey, hey, you still want to do this. Are we doing this? Or yeah. you have your chart that you can reference everything? There's like for real, like repartee going on, there's just absolutely no time for that. Yeah, and also like every conversation between GMs is like the first time that they've ever spoken. Oh, <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah. Nobody knows the guy's name in Jacksonville. Yes, <laughs> they're like, he they're like, what's his name? name? Yeah, they're like, who's the kid GM? Like, I don't even know who Dude, it is. I can't believe it took Sonny, us. This- Sonny Weaver doesn't know the pick order. He's like, who's on the clock now at five? <laughs> who's picking? They They're don't like, even see picks happening. Like they I, missed the I second know, and third pick. Yeah, that was the best part is that he makes the number one pick and then like goes like into leaves. his into his office and like canoodles with Jennifer Garner yeah. for like, yeah. apparently twenty five minutes yeah. and misses three picks. Yeah, yeah. he comes and they back, come back into and they're the like, room. Yeah, like guys, you're Callahan never is gonna still believe what happened. Callahan's still dropping. <laughs> yeah. Like he just made his pick and left. Yeah, yeah. Jonah barges in. He's like, you guys won't believe what's happening. What? It's the draft. The NFL draft. Yeah, it continued. Yeah, the teams after you are now making They're their picks, making, and all of them are like, they didn't take Bo Callahan. Yeah, what? Like, what? What's wrong with him? And no one, no one takes him. Sonny Weaver thinks that he's been quarterback. dealt like a tough hand, and that like the city hates him for no reason, or like because he fired his dad. But it's really because he makes his pick and then immediately clocks out and goes home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> has a like, cool yeah. done done. All right, I gotta job. go yell at my pregnant. I don't even know if we're seeing each other, girlfriend thing or whatever. But uh, you mentioned the ineptitude. It is insane across the board. The movie starts with the president of the Seattle Seahawks not knowing about not knowing what the uh, the RG three trade was. He's like, so we've oh, got yeah. the what? first overall pick. Huh? What would they get for that trade? Yeah, he does ask. Now that. the Rams traded down. Wait, right? now who's? I'm sorry, who's the president? The president is the guy from Boston Public. Correct. Yes, correct. With like the wrinkly head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that guy. And then the GM is the other guy. Yeah. Major Pan- juxtaposition the between pancake, the pancake, guy. the pancake yeah. guy, the guy that they, they literally tried Tom. to find somebody as close looking to Pete Carroll as they possibly could. Yeah, they. Yeah. So the, these, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> the GM of the Seahawks is named Tom, and he calls Sonny. They make their trades and everything. And every time they talk about the Seahawks, they're talking about Tom. And there's a scene where after the trade has been made, Seahawks have traded down. All the Seahawks fans are mad. Tom looks out the window and everybody has signs. They're picketing against Tom. Big sign. They're like, the signs say Tom has to go. (laughs) This man does not have a last name. Everything is like, because it's the name of the character in the movie, okay? That's just Tom and they're all really mad at Tom. All of their signs are like, 
Fucked up. Tom? <laughs> question mark? Not for me. I don't like Tom. <laughs> Not my Tom. No, but they did. They did start like lining up and like picketing outside immediately. the office immediately. And he's like, oh shit. He's like, I didn't know how this was going to play. And then Sonny Weaver, Kevin Costner, later on in the movie, acknowledges that he's been reading all the fan blogs. Yeah, <laughs> right. And he doesn't have enough time to fucking study well, up well, on his own like, picks. They never. What did, what did he look it up on? He broke a computer. <laughs> He hucked a computer across the room. And I guess it was the intern's computer, was, but like, when was he reading the fan blogs? Yeah. It's a great question. Between all the canoodling, all the. the He's worried about his pregnant his... wife and dealing with her <laughs> girlfriend, dealing Famously, with he is not the angry coach. worried about his pregnant wife. He doesn't have time to spread his father's ashes on the field right outside, but Reading he can fan read blogs. up on the fan blogs. Yeah. I got to say, so the, the scene comes, the mother shows up with his ex wife and is super mean to Sonny and makes him feel really <laughs> bad and really guilty. And she's like, you have to read this prayer while we go sprinkle your dad's ashes outside. It's the fucking day of the draft. That is unacceptable. It is. Not cool. And Sonny throws a fit, famously does throw a laptop. There aren't many points during this movie where you're like, Sonny's got a grasp of, grasp of things. This scene, yes. Yeah. Mom, you can't. You no. cannot be here right now. You can't be here right now. It is absolutely unacceptable. He does have a pretty good grasp on uh, who should be there and who shouldn't be there. Yeah. Like, when he walks in and the intern is there, he's like, what the fuck is this guy doing outside of my office? So, my biggest, like, take on draft day, my famous draft day take was, like, yep. what's going... When we were watching it a couple weeks ago, it was like, there's no way... So, there's an, he gets to his office and there's a kid sitting there and he's like, who are you? And I have audio of it that I'll play in a second, but he's like, who are you? And they're like, oh, that's the new intern. And they go about their day. And we were like... No fucking way is an intern starting on draft day and sitting outside the GM's it, office. His desk is right outside the GM's oh, yeah. office. And Adam it, Schefter calls him. He's yeah. got Adam. She's got Adam Schefter on the line at one point, and my that, this is my favorite part of the movie. Coster tells Schefter to fuck off. Yeah, that's yeah. the best part. Suck it, Schefter. Yeah. So th this is Tom Telesco watching that scene, and I felt very validated. Like, yes, this is the most far fetched thing of the movie. This is Rick. He's a new intern. Wait, pause yeah. it for a second. <laughs> this is draft day, right? Now, I'm not paranoid, but if somebody brought in an intern, yeah. a brand new intern who I had no idea who he was oh, right yeah. in front of my office the day of the draft, yeah. no chance. <laughs> no chance. No fucking way. No. Well, now, what do you, well, what and do you he's think? he's like stammering and like nervous, like yeah, he's he, about to get caught doing yeah, he, something. He's like, don't worry, sir. I'm definitely not a spy. Right. Like, what do you think he's nervous yes, about? Yes, Tom. The old... I mean, oh, no, Tom's the other guy I talked to. Ugh, to What's be fair, he... it doesn't seem like uh, in real life or in this movie that anybody is trying to steal this Cleveland Browns draft secrets. No. Well, so, but do you think it's that or do you think it's like he's got to be worried about the owner getting dirt on him with, ah. with Jennifer Garner? The hmm. owner's the son of a bitch. The owner, you said is very, like you. You said he's well cast, meaning like the look of him. Yes. Like I just thought it was a well written part because owners are just so they care about all the wrong stuff. Yeah. Right. So make he's like, make a splash. You know, I got. He's all worried about the fucking jersey. He's all mm -hmm. like, I got the jersey made up. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be there. He's doing the interview with Rich Eisen or whatever. <laughs> like you know, like they hit on all those like. All those, those like selfish notes. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like they hit, they nailed even, that. Even in the even in the booth at the end of the movie, uh, when they when they had the season opener, they're like, "Great draft, sir! Like yeah, you yeah, did yeah. a great job." Right. And he's like, Thank you very much. This I'm guy, not gonna, made, this guy made his money in water parks, right? <laughs> yeah, is that how he made his yeah. money? Yep. I made can't his money take in water credit, but I will. Which was a thinly veiled, uh, you know, uh, 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 allusion. Well, it was uh, to, to making a splash. He made he's, yeah. he's made oh. all his money in the, in the amusement park water parks. Look at this tomato yeah. fighter. How about that? How about that? It just, I just popped into my head. Roger but so, so they, but they, they, they do hit on all that stuff, which I thought they, they knock out of the park. It's just some, some guy who made a bunch of money, right. Who's clueless and cares about all the wrong stuff. They nailed the owner part. There is one line of this movie that is particularly cringe. I actually don't find this movie cringe or chuggy or whatever. Only the scene where Brian drew, who is supposed to be some sort of composite of, by the way, a lot of these characters, I think, are based on, loosely based on characters, right? You could say, okay, well, this kind of seems like this. But Brian Drew, to me, was Drew Brees, maybe. Okay. where Like a really injured Drew Brees. Right, like Drew Brees when they get Philip Rivers kind of thing of, right, wait, like, but you already like, have me. Yeah. Why see, are you San, trading for... San Diego Drew Brees, got it. Okay. Right, got right, it. San Diego Drew Brees. Although, it's, it's again, it's not a perfect comparison because I Drew Brees was just bad. That's why they drafted Philip Rivers. Rivers. He was horrible in San Diego. Anyway, um, 
But he, he finds out that they've traded for the number one overall pick. So he comes in and he trashes Sonny's office. The intern was not good enough muscle to prevent him from doing that. No. And they have this big confrontation. Why was Sonny he even there? It's the and off Brian. season. Yeah. And Yo, he's there like he's there like working out. Like the <laughs> like the strength the strength coach is like, oh my the god, he's throwing coach. farther. Yo, this the throwing farther coach never. is the worst strength coach he in the sucks. world because he's like, hey, did you hear about Brian Drew? And he's like, what? He's in great shape. How do you know? I just, I just got off the, the phone. <laughs> Somebody told me that he's benching really well. And he's like, so he didn't do any of this stuff with you? You had no part of this? No. Like, <laughs> what are you doing then? And like, is he supposed to be benching? Yeah. Like, he, he's, he's, somehow he can throw 15 yards deeper because he benched he a bench. bunch. Yeah. So, you know what? Maybe he's not having much contact with the strength coach. If your quarterback suddenly can throw 15 yards further, if you're the strength strength coach... You want to distance yourself yeah, from right. that entire operation. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, true. but he's but so he's Jack now. So he's yeah. just he's in there just ru- destroying the office. Hey. Uh, there's like yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of stuff pointing here that that Brian Drew is on the roids. Yeah. So, so he has this confrontation with Sonny. He says, "Trade me." He says, "Stop ch- chunking my office, man." <laughs> and they're yelling at each other. And he says, "If I trade you, I trade you." But for now, like what do you say? He's like, "Leave me alone." I'm working here. And he walks away. And it's like such big uh, Kermit going, shut up, energy. It's like everyone's like, fuck. That's there, right, man. He's got a job to do. fucking draft day. There's Come on, zero, Sonny. There's zero respect for uh, for Sonny's office in this movie. Number one, they set up the new intern right outside the office. Yep. Shouldn't it's be there. a bad there. spot. Uh, Dennis Leary sets it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Brian oh, yeah. trashes it. And then uh, open door policy for every f- member of the family. There is a crazy open door yeah. policy yeah. for the general manager's so why, office on draft day. Why was his, speaking of the open door policy, so it was mom comes in and they're reading the why is the ex-wife why was the around? ex-wife there i yeah. don't know good question why think, is the ex-wife around i think because the mom again mom bad character bad person yeah salt in the wound it's, she so shows she, up and she again she's having the fucking cap person get them coffee yeah and calling oh my them God. intentionally calling them by the wrong name yep uh yeah i, I just think that the, the ex-wife and was throw there. it parading the ex-wife around yeah, yeah. I, I think that the ex-wife was there purposely because the mom was like how can I fuck up this guy's day as much as possible? So disrespectful. Really, really terrible. Uh, do we want to talk about some of these these negotiation scenes? Yeah, I yeah. do want to mention uh, first, uh, how mad is Schefter that he wasn't involved in this movie? Because they involved a ton of media people, and, the, o- name. and the only one that they shit on is Adam Schefter. This is clearly an NFL production, and oh, nobody, no. nobody is more in bed with the NFL than Schefter. Schefter went ham on his D after this movie. That he got the, like... Tell Schefter, tell Schefter that he ain't getting a scoop from me today. Dude, I don't personally know Adam Schefter. I've dealt with him enough to know. And I said, I don't say this disparagingly, but it takes a certain type of ego to kind of do that job. And like he was very, I, I guarantee he was pumped when he heard that. And nobody is more smugly in bed with their league than Adam Schefter. Perfect. But that's why I think that he's probably pissed. He's probably looking at like Rich Eisen. Uh, who else is involved here? Ian uh, Rapport. Yeah, Ian Rapport. Like, where, the, where was Mortensen, so, I think, is in here. Ra- where is Rap Sheet in the movie? He is reporting from the draft. I and, think, like the background? Point. No, he's. I think they show him on. Oh, he does like a Gary Tangway. Chris type Berman of scene. is in it. Berman, yeah. Berman like, actually. Berman starts the movie. I think. Yes, yeah, he, he does. does. He does like a, a uh, nice little timed. Uh, so yeah, it's not just like an NFL Network versus ESPN thing because they definitely use Berman, right? Huh. So they just bring in like the biggest heavy hitters that they can associated with the NFL, but Schefter only only mentioned by name. I love to, I and also in like a, him a in like bit. a brush him off kind of right, like. Yeah. Get, Get this fucking Schefter out of here. Schefter is a little barking chihuahua at my yeah. ankles. Get him <laughs> out right. of here. What they really should have done is they should have had fucking one of these jabronis <laughs> feed Schefter a report to get it out there False to story. fuck with other, oh, other, yeah. they other should have uh, done draft that. rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Schefter's involvement is that he is calling the team. He's calling like 1-800-Cleveland-Browns. Right. <laughs> like he's to confirm. trying to talk to his middle school girlfriend, like calling the landline. It is very like, funny. They speak to the new intern to try you, to get a hold of the GM. Hi, is Mr. Weaver there? I've got a report I'd like to ask him about. Absolutely not how that works. No. It's fucking vaunting Mac. 
has <laughs> right. Vontae Mac has How does the Vontae GM's Mac number, have the number and, and Schefter Adam Schefter does not. Good point. That never happens. Um, all right. We want to get to some of these trade negotiations yes. because yes. they're wild. So they pick Vontae Mac first overall. It's a big reach. The owner pissed slams the jersey down. I love that scene. Really, really good stuff there. No one knows. No I, one knows. Only Kevin Costner knows. He's got a little note that he wrote to himself. Vontae yeah, Mac right. above everything well, or something like that. The the his his side piece in the office knows because she found it after Brian Drew That's trashed true. the office. That's true. Oh, that is right. Yeah. So only two people in the building know. Uh, but the owner they, definitely and doesn't know. Sex with each other. The so. Coach does. The coach doesn't <laughs> no. know. Vontae Mac doesn't know. Bo Callahan definitely doesn't know. Like no one knows. No, it's a real got, stunner. Chadwick Boseman, I I, I want to not insult this movie because I truly do like it, but Chadwick no, yeah. Boseman reacting to getting drafted is like, you're you're too good for this movie. I know that people don't know who you are yet, but like he turns in a great I just got drafted reaction and not like the. Wait, what? Like, hug, like he he fucking acted for a there second there. There is some bad acting. I in was this like, movie. damn, you're not supposed to act in this movie, <laughs> <Right>? my guy. <laughs> Fuck, you're too good for this. Like, this was a very much like a hey, a bunch of these actors are just getting the bag because it's an NFL backed production. Uh, yeah. They put sunk a ton of money into Costner it. Costner doesn't do a good job in this movie. No, Costner he, hasn't done a good job in like anything in a little while. Again, I'm working here is such a tough. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Like, Come on, I'm working. Oh, <laughs> now God, what was I doing? That's right. <laughs> Pulling tape on the number one overall pick. Scouting. Well, and we didn't even talk about how we, how they decide on Vontae Mack over Bocal. Okay, yeah. So, well, number one, they had... The, my, one of my favorite characters in the movie is the fucking private detective. Yeah, oh, so that good. That guy rocks. Which, like, again, just to bring it back to the Patriots for a minute, you know, if this guy worked for the Patriots, they never draft Aaron Hernandez. Because this guy, <laughs> this guy is digging up dirt. This guy's got dirt on everything. Finding great things. And so no one goes to Bo Callahan's birthday party. No, none of his teammates go to Bo Callahan's birthday party. So, like, okay. Yeah. I red, do like that red they flag. act very surprised when the investigator knows that they're fucking. Like, how did you find this out? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, dude, every the intern knows that, that you right. guys are fucking. This is Dennis his first Leary's day on the job. Dennis purpose in this movie is to crash into the walls showing people his ring the whole time, and he knows that you're fucking. Yeah. He's a fucking, he's one of those fucking, like, teeth toys that you just wind up and just That's all he does. Walls. I got one of these in Dallas. Yeah, yes, thank you, so Dennis that's true. Leary. So that guy, but the guy, he got, he sniffed it out. He sniffs <laughs> out the, the Bo Callahan thing. And then uh, Vontae Mack sacked Bo Callahan four times when they played, right? Mm -hmm. Wisconsin and Ohio State play. And Vontae Mack sacks him four times, but Bo Callahan throws like the walk-off touchdown. They mm -hmm. win the game. He wins the Heisman, blah, blah, blah. But they finally pop in the tape, and they're watching <laughs> at the end. He gets the game-winning touchdown, and, and Costner's like, rewind it. No, 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 watch that playback. What's, what's going on on the field? And they're like, uh, uh, I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Vontae Mack's not on the field. Hmm. And that's that's like the tiebreaker for him. He's like, well, that touchdown well, never went. I thought the I thought the most ridiculous part of that whole sequence was that like uh, they couldn't figure out why he was on the field, and then like Jonah, the the fucking guy, is like, oh, I remember this. He gets thrown. Oh, he got out thrown the, out. Right, yeah, right, right, that, right. A first round pick. Oh yeah, from he Ohio got ejected. State. Like this would have been a huge gets and ejected and after sacking the the fucking showdown American yeah. four times gets ejected gets ejected right. and then everybody forgets about and it. And like, like it's because he was being really mouthy with the ref, right? He he, he pulled a Jeremy Shockey, punted a, the ball into the stands or something, hit a kid, right? And Costner's like, no, freeze it. That's his dead sister. No, but that's no, not that's his giving sister. the ball no, to his No, they're dead all like sister. he goes. They're all that's like, oh, they're, his, they're just giving it to some random fan. They're yeah. just giving the ball to some I random they, fan. You can't they, do that. I think they use. Uh, I think they use the word chicks. We right. got a, we got a chicks matchup uh, in this tomato yes. fights. Both movies use the word chicks because one of the guys is like, can't just be. Can't just be feeding chicks. I believe <laughs> that's the uh, the <laughs> warden from Prison Break yes, who has correct, that line. Yeah. And, and then and then it turns out that it's his dead sister. No, it's, it, it, well, he doesn't even say it's his dead sister. He goes, "That's his sister." She died six <laughs> weeks after. Like that was like a cause. Yeah, that she fucking died because he got ejected from the game. Yeah. They're like, "Damn, how dare!" By the way, thinking back on that scene, how dare me? you say Kevin Costner didn't do a great job in this movie? <laughs> how dare you? Because what what acting jobs that took? And and Dennis Leary immediately comes out with. Oh, boo-hoo. Yeah, he's oh, like, yes. Oh, oh yeah. boo-hoo. I need a running back. <laughs> boo-hoo. I got one of these in Dallas. 
My <laughs> wife likes that kind of thing. Yeah, cry, uh, me, cry me a river. Yeah, he's like, no, fucko. Yeah, she there's, died. There's not a shred of journalism being done correctly in this movie. Like the fact that uh, it, it, clearly it wasn't even covered that Vontae <laughs> yeah. Mack was thrown out of the third quarter of a game in which he had four sacks <laughs> against the best quarterback in the country. Yeah. Uh, Setting NCAA records and they toss him. They're like, yeah. Yeah, no reason. He gets tossed for giving a ball to his uh, his sister and uh, his nephews. Nobody covers that. Oh, Kevin Costner's the only guy who right. knows in like, the think world. About, like, think about, you guys watch the Manti Teo thing, <laughs> yeah. Sure, yeah. right? Like, think about how big of a story that was. Right. Like, yeah. it's his dead sister. It's not his girlfriend or his grandmother, but like, it's his dead sister. He's one He's a first round pick. Like right. that would have that would have been covered. Right. That would have been a big story. In like knowing the NFL and how much they and especially draft day coverage, that oh, that's all they ESPN talk about would have been coming their dicks off that's knowing true. that this guy oh, yeah. is a dead yeah. sister. And that was really, I want to say maybe 2008 to 2000, maybe like 17, they start to kind of get the message of stop making like everything about porn. Yeah, yeah, right. Tragedy porn. That peep. Right in the fucking wheelhouse, they would have been yeah. like, "Wait, you think? Yo. You think they've stopped doing that? I, th- I feel like they. I feel like they've no. Maybe more recently, maybe no, not they, 2017. They've, but le- they've leaned back into it because now the drafts more? on now the drafts on ABC in addition to ESPN, and I think now they like they like really lean. Oh dear I th- God! I think that they they've they've more steered into like spinning it into like a feel good story rather than being like, "Isn't this so sad?" Okay, so that's that might okay. be fair. Yeah, but it's still a lot of like this tragedy happened to this person. Right. There's tons of them. yeah, yeah. They're oh, like yeah. you know his seventh grade science teacher died, <laughs> yeah, and like they'll right. like dig up anything like that. But uh, th- he's like, yeah, she died six months later or whatever, and they're like, damn. A lot of deaths around this day, huh? And he's like, who else died? <laughs> it's like, Jesus, Sonny. <laughs> you killed your dad. Um, so, yeah, they're pulling all that tape. Uh, the Tom Telesco thing. So he watches the uh, the um, part with the investigator, and he finds the nobody went to the birthday party thing interesting. He was like, I, I'm not taking a guy off my board for that reason, but if it's a quarterback and... Oh, nice. Teammates aren't good. He was like, that is definitely like very good it's work. Flag. And we're like putting that. that we're team p- captain. Yeah, right. If it's a team captain and nobody. By the way, Sam Elliott. I was just going to say, well, Sam Elliott scoffs at that shit. Oh, it's yeah. like, listen, they went. Okay. I was there too. Everybody went. <laughs> yeah. That's my Sam Elliott impression. I mean, Sam Elliott did a pretty good job of throwing him off the scent because he was like, yeah, you're right. Nobody fucking. None of his teammates yeah. liked him. And yeah, they, they never wanna, came out. Maybe they just didn't want to get jammed up <laughs> yeah, by the cops. Right. right. Yeah. He's like, but yeah, no, I. I come after, after no one Sam wanted Elliott to go. conversation, I was like, like, huh, maybe he's right. And I've I already seen this movie. So. Fuck you, Sonny. They like him. He's got a lot of friends. And That's then Sam Elliott's, Elliott's like, fuck you, cowboys aren't gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Fucking Sam Elliott. What happened to that guy? Uh, so, wait, but so Sam Elliott also, they're just like, so for some reason, Wisconsin's like doing a practice, like a spring practice or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's just like taking calls in the middle of practice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, nobody's ever he's doing their like, job. He's in this just movie. like they're in the middle of practice. Not correctly, at least. He, he takes a phone call about Bo Callahan from Sonny Weaver in the middle of practice, and he like hangs up the phone. He's like, "Fucking run it again!" You know, <laughs> he's like, "He's like, do that play oh, yeah, again." He's like, oh, like, I'm pissed now. Right, they're, but they're like in the middle of practice. Yeah, Not like he's just like at his office. He's they're in the middle of practice. Yeah. So they uh, so then they show the dollar bill thing with with Bo, where yes. there's a an old trick where one of the teams puts. A hundred dollar bill in the back of their playbook when they send it to prospects, and they ask him later, "Hey, so what'd you think of the playbook?" to see if they make any mention of a hundred dollar bill. And the investigator says that a lot. Sometimes guys get caught in the lie, but then they cop to it. And Bo's the only person he doubled who, down. He doubled down. He yeah. said, "Oh yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, my bad. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's a good joke or whatever." And he says he's the only one who doubled down on the, who committed to the lie. And Telesco, again, when I saw these scenes in the movie, I was like, stupid. They're just like dramatizing all this stuff. Telesco was like, every player doubles down. Okay. So, no, no. He was like, oh, he thought that was good. He was like, all right, case closed. He's off my board. Really? Yeah. Yeah. He was like, we're not taking Bo Callahan. He was like, if you're sending. No potentially shit. the top pick. Well, in the he's draft. got Justin Herbert though, so that's like that's like he's already he's coming at it through that lens. Yeah, he's like, yeah, why are they? I'm I'm not drafting any of these yeah, guys. Right. Uh, I got Austin Eckler. I'm not taking a freaking <laughs> running back. Uh, although I'll tell you what, Vont, you got Vontae Mack instead of Kyle Van Noy on that defense. You are looking very very good. Anyway, I would like to ask Telesco what he would think if uh, his quarterback let uh, one of his coordinators cut his hair with dull scissors. 
Because do you remember the fucking haircut that Justin Herbert got his rookie year? Oh, tough. It was awful. Yeah. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. He, he had the worst like haircut in the world. It was like a pseudo like buzz cut, right? Yeah. And yeah. He, uh, the co- one of his coordinators cut his hair. I didn't know hair. that. Yeah. I remember he got the bad haircut. Yeah. That one, I did not He let know. one of his coordinators cut his hair. Yeah. Not good. I mean, the... the, the Chargers had a bad year with scissors, with, <laughs> with pointy objects that That's a year, good point. just puncturing lungs. But so Telesco Tarot thought Taylor. between between the nobody showing up and the and the lying about the hundred dollar bill, he's like he's out. He's off yeah. my board. Interesting. Yeah. He says he's off my board. He's, I think he was just speaking in, from a vacuum. Like the hundred dollar bill would have taken up off the board. Yes. alone. Right. Oh, so not even the friends thing. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes like you're not even looking at the fucking playbook. Well, he might have looked at the beginning of it. He didn't get to the end of it. What do I need the whole playbook for? Or maybe you're the, you, you, know, might even, you might not even draft me. I got to read the whole thing. I'll just familiarize myself with the beginning of it. Maybe uh, Puffy vetted the playbook. He yeah. like leafed through it to make sure there's no anthrax or anything yeah, yeah, yeah. fell out, and then he gave it to. But I, I, that's a so that's a real thing teams do. There's a fa- there's a famous story that I think Jamarcus Russell just confirmed that the Raiders. This oh, is a- they give him. Yeah. This is after he was drafted. This is not leading up. They should have done this leading up to the draft. But when the Raiders drafted Jamarcus Russell, they would give him blank DVDs <laughs> of like that week's opponent. Like, here are the cut ups. Like, watch these this week. And they'd be like, so you watched them, right? They're blank DVDs. You'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I watched that. Real I, good. Like, I like broke down this week's opponent. Lots of good stuff on there, guys. <laughs> so, like, that's, <laughs> that's when you know. Amazing. That's when you know you're in deep shit. And the, but you got to do that before the draft Raiders, not after you draft the guy. It I mean, insane, Bo like, Callen, if he was smart, would have been like, Motherfucker, I'm Bo Callahan. Every team puts hundred dollar bills in my playbook. Yep. Yeah. But he he, he should have been like, I invested it. He doesn't have that Vince Vaughn took, charm though. I took it and invested it uh, in an NFT. Tom he Brady been like, style. You only gave me a hundred dollars and you expected me to notice. Yeah. I don't get out of bed for anything less than <laughs> right. fucking five hundred. But man, bills. yeah, that's interesting though. So they must have a real. How many prospects do you think they do the hundred bucks to? All of them, he or just said, like the big uh, ones? He said they what did. What team to, did he say? I think he did said it. they did to fi- like five of them. Okay. okay, so that's a reasonable budget yeah. for a team. Yeah, five hundred dollars. Yeah, you don't want like you don't want like you don't want to be flushing thousands of dollars down the toilet just on the on all these prospects. That's true. Here, do you? You know, there's only one player that sent the hundred dollar bill back and said, uh, "I did." This is for when I win you a Super Bowl. Again, until watching it sober, I thought I knew what they were going to say, and I was kind of stunned who they said it. I was. thought it was going to be Vontae Mack. That's right. right? I thought, yeah, yes. right. Yeah, of course, I thought it was yeah. going to be Vontae Mack. Yeah. In a previous year, which it was he famously Drew. wouldn't have sent the hundred dollars. Yeah, he'd be like, he was, he was like, I need kids. money. <laughs> no, that's yeah. a good point. It's got two mouths to feed. Please, maybe, maybe just you know. I bet tumbling class isn't cheap. Like, save a few bucks there. Right, you know? true. <laughs> Let the kids go run around in the park. There Take are two, them to a playground. There are two big uh, trade negotiation showdowns in the final minutes of this movie, which is he gets back on the clock at six because nobody is drafting Bo. So he asks... Well, the Broncos aren't going to take Bo Callahan at five. They have, an all, they have, an, all, they have an all-pro quarterback. Mm-hmm. quarterback. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he sees how it's unfolding. He doesn't want Bo Callahan to fall back to Seattle. Right. His original pick. Because Seattle kind of wants the quarterback at one, but they move down to seven. They're, I'm still not sure why, but they enti- move down to seven. Their entire purpose of... To save a few bucks, right? Well, no. I mean, that's... What? Seattle? Yes. Uh, they... Uh, I don't know. I don't really know why, why. did they move down? Why did I they wake know. up draft day and say, we don't want this quarterback? Yeah, I don't either. know. I, I, it's, I have no idea. They don't really ever explain that. I think why they kind of so loosely eager. say it's salary cap issues, I think. They have some salary cap issues, but the also they loved, really the value wants, of, yeah. they loved the value of what the Rams had done yeah. with the Big value guys. The owner seems to like the power play of having the number one pick and yep. then spinning it into more, like a real Danny Ainge move. But so that's oh, why yeah. But so that's why Kevin Costner is like, well, I'm not letting... Bo Callahan drop right into their laps. Now I'm gonna look like yeah, a real. I'm gonna look so, like a real so, horse's ass. So that's yeah. that's what I found funny is that like their entire like purpose of the entire motivation for them Cleveland winning the draft is just to like spite Seattle. Yes, yeah. totally. Yeah, he's yeah, like, I mean, so I'm gonna get on the board with Jacksonville in front of Denver. Uh, in, I'm sorry, in front of Seattle after Denver, and I'm gonna really hold them over the fucking coals. Yeah, yeah. Like like Costner makes that deal, and he's like. Oh shit! We got we got the pick. Who are we picking? Well, right. He was like, "Who are we picking?" Jonah is running around in the background, like, "Are we on the clock? What what is going on?" And he does another Kermit, like, "Everybody, knock <laughs> it off! I'm working here. Everybody out, except Allie. No, uh, they. So he he calls Jacksonville, gets the sixth overall pick from him, played by Pat Healy, and he's Jeff Carson, little Jeffy. They just bully this kid." 
They offer him two second rounders. I do like fucking working. I want to be able to play the the, the response, but I do like that it's 2014 and like the Browns are trash. The Jaguars are trash. Yeah. And that just has not changed. No, no, it's a hundred, it's a hundred percent evergreen. When they they were going into this movie, NFL was like, what teams should we pick that will age perfectly? I believe that, um, I forget. I think it was the Jaguars scene where they made, I believe the NFL had them change the script to include a better package than what they eventually took because there's a scene with the Jaguars where he steals really? the sixth round pick from So them. that's that's an improved scene because the, the Jaguars got absolutely they fucked. Get they get hosed. Yeah, they, they got they, he wrapped. trades yes. three second rounders for, for the, the sixth, sixth overall, overall pick. Yeah. Just a horrible, horrible, horrible not, deal. Again, but just so p- if people haven't seen it, it's not to like it's not you're getting another first round pick this year. It's six out of the blue, out of the ether for for three first second rounders. Yes. Right. That's a horrible deal. And he's doing it. Bec- and the, and the, reason and they, the NFL improved on that. They had it even worse. I believe it was even worse. And the Jaguars wow. were like, you can't make us <laughs> look that bad. But he initially offers him two second round picks for six, to which he says, yeah, that sounds awesome, Sonny. What am I, a jerk? <laughs> and you're like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. They are negotiating now. This guy is... And he Hot says, under the he says, hey, I'd give you first round picks, but I don't have any. I've traded them away. Yeah, he's traded like, away. That's fucking the Jaguars problem. Yeah, right. It's like, oh, yeah, OK, well, he doesn't have first round picks. He's traded away. First round picks. He's Gotta traded give away him. three years worth of first round picks. He's like, I can't get I can't give you. I'll give you all my second rounders. He's like, oh, that's the best you have. It's not like I could trade it to another team. <laughs> I love there's the guy next to what's the kid GM's name again? Jeff what? Jeff. Jeff Carson. Jeff Carson. There's a guy next to him when he gets the third second round pick. And he's like, deal. Yeah, and there's a, every, yeah. there's like a guy. A there's a guy like, next to him, and he's like, oh yeah. He's like, <laughs> he's like, good now job, you, now good you job holding him. out for that. He's yeah. like, oh yeah, that was a good deal. And uh, Patty Lee plays that scene so well because once it's closed, when he says deal, he has this little like twinkle, twinkle in his eyes, like mm-hmm. I fucking did it. Yeah, <laughs> and the whole room is like, yo, we are slick. Well, there's now we have four I, second round. And, like, like, and that immediately comes after uh, Jeff is like, make it four second round picks. And <laughs> Kevin Costner's like, no, no, fuck you, man. <laughs> Don't even try to put on your yeah. big boy pants, you little bitch. Right. Not with me, okay? <laughs> yeah. right. right, you kid GM. <laughs> and, so, and Jeffy's like, uh, you're right, I'm sorry. Yeah, we'll do three. But like, sorry, there, sir. Is, is three still on the table? There's this common fallacy in the movie where like everybody's like really worried about the future. Right, like if you're yeah. a Jack, if you're working for Jacksonville or even Cleveland, like Dennis Leary wanting draft picks is the weirdest fucking thing in this movie. The head coach telling the GM... You're yeah, fucking right. over the future by not like any head coach would be like, oh, yeah, bring in a bunch of guys yeah. this year. Right. We you want to te- be good or get fired at the beginning of we your want, contract. We want our team to be good right now. I don't care about first round picks in three years. Why would the coach care about that? Like Kevin, part of his pitch to this GM, the 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 Jacksonville GM is like, well, you know, it's going to play really well in Jacksonville that you got future picks. It's like, I bet Jaguars fans are pissed that you traded out of six. Yeah. And got a bunch of second of round course. picks. Yeah. Why would they care about the future? They're the Jaguars. And like if you're Dennis Leary. You're working for a guy who just fired his dad to bring you in. What right. makes you think that you're fucking safe? You're not. You want to win immediately. Give me the best team immediately so that I don't get fucking thrown yeah, they under had that the bus. To- they had that totally backwards. It should have been yeah. the coach demanding action now right. and the GM being like, well, we got to wait our future. Right. But and even if the coach backwards. gets fired, I mean, it's like the Ed Orgeron thing. Did you guys see the amazing video of Ed Orgeron talking yeah, about right. like at the Arkansas like, Gridiron Club like, or whatever. We're going to fire you and we're going to give you your contract. And he's yeah. like, cool. Tight. I, yeah. He's like, when do you want me to leave him through which door? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amazing. Um, yeah. Really? In reality, they should have had uh, the owner wanting to make a splash. That was, that was true to life. That, true to that life played. for sure. Yeah. But the coach w- should want like the best team immediately. Whereas like the GM is wanting the, like the coach should have been in the owner's ear. Being like, yes. oh, I mean, well, the, the lack of communication between the coach and GM and GM and staff and GM and scouts and Literally GM and everybody in the building, like the GM o- and mom. The is- only thing that everybody was on the same page about was that Kevin Costner is fucking the stat girl. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it's the yeah. only thing that they, they know. It, it, but even she is like, yo, your communication is horrible. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, oh, God, you're always up my butt. Bring in the coach. And the coach is like. Did you make a fucking trade without telling me? He's like, also, oh, bring me my girlfriend again. By the way, glass stones with her. Like, your communication's terrible. You just told him about your 
pregnant but on draft day of all right. days <laughs> like talk about like not having good Again, communication i'm pretty skills. sure it could have been just like the opportunity was there it was like man i hope the future is bright and she's like oh even more bright than you think check out this thing i'm pregnant but she she couldn't have been that pregnant <laughs> like that's she kinda, was, that was an or like she, she had was, some more, she had more time to let him she know was she was still she, she was still like lightly pregnant on uh week one when they flash Good forward to week one, she's Good like, point. Oh. She is, she, this she's is not early, ready to pop. This is early term. Pre- like she didn't need to. She didn't need to let him know that day. Right. Her and like when he lets she's them. Not when showing. he lets them. When he lets the, her. His yeah, mom you're right. They the haven't even. Of, they haven't even I'm, had the I'm kid. Like, are you even at the three month point? Like, yeah. isn't that when you're supposed to start telling people? Oh, yeah. right. Is it like <laughs> you got too caught up in the moment? You tell your partner point, or is it? This is for public consumption. Well, no, I think yeah, right. in general, you're telling your partner pretty early, but not on a not on a big day like this. He's fucking working here, right? Like that, like that, that baby is that baby's not going anywhere. No. Like that baby's not Holy rushing. Yeah, she's like trying to pick out names in the middle of the draft. <laughs> like we're not at that step yet. What if? Oh, it's all making sense. When he yells at Brian Drew, he says, "You're the second person I've had to say it to today. Not now. <laughs> I'm fucking working here." <laughs> that was. They would have improved on the dialogue. Uh, yeah. I yeah. do like that he pulls like the I'm working here card quite a bit. Mm. And he's Despite like. Despite that he's never working. He's never really working. And everybody else around him is trying to work. But he's not telling them anything so they can't work. Yeah. Like all of the work that they're doing, they have to burn because he's not telling them shit. They can't find the 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 guy from from prison break. Can't even find video. He's yeah. yelling at the intern. He's like, "We're trying to watch some video of oh, players." Yeah. They changed the punch code. But where, what's the punch code? Where's, yeah, the, yeah, where's yeah. the where's the video? They are so inept. But anyway, he gets on the clock at six, steals six from oh. from Jeffy, and then calls up Tom. And he's like, "Hey, Tom, it's me." And he's like, "Oh, well, we're just celebrating that we're getting Bo. That's only if you go through me. I got six now. I'm on the clock. I'm on the clock. It's me." And all of Seattle, suddenly there's more people there because a lot of the time, Seattle is just the president and Tom. Yes. It's just the two boys. The just, room the room has showed up. Yeah, there's a, there's a war room going on now. Yeah. They, they now finally have a war room, and they're going to get Bo, but he's got to go through Sonny first. And Telesco makes a great point. When they show this, he's like, oh, my God. Dude, call his bluff. They passed on Bo already. Well, that's what they said they were going to do, but then they didn't do it. They, you gotta, you gotta call his bluff. There, they, do, they clearly found something that we don't like. This guy, he's throwing fits. He's running out of Radio City Music Hall. Yeah, Seahawks shouldn't have made that trade. No, definitely not. In theory, I was thinking this watching. It, it. seems like the Seahawks don't even want Bo. Agreed. They I traded mean, out of. Right, they, they also traded out of him. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now, yeah, that's true. Who's calling whose bluff? I, in theory, he could have flipped the pick somewhere else. Yeah, that's what he should have said. I mean, the, the real loser of this real... obviously is Jeffy because yeah, he, can't, he, he he spent three second rounders to then get like 500 first round picks right. and David Putney. <laughs> what I was a little bit confused about was when he's on the phone with Seattle and he's like, I want all my picks back. Yeah. Does he 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 doesn't get does he get three back? Yes. Yeah. So he, he gets, gets, he gets seven, seven and two future first. OK. All right. So and David Putney and so, David Putney. And, he, and he's basically like. Nobody, he he says to the Seattle GM, he's like, nobody's any wiser. It's like, what do you mean nobody's any wiser? <laughs> yeah, right. This was on TV, my guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. And Vontae every, Mack tweeted it this morning. My mom saw it. Everybody's going, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah like, yeah. what are you talking about? And nobody's any the wiser. You end up with two top six or top seven picks. And again, he tells him, he's like, and you save the money going from one to seven, which... And then the guy from Boston Public is like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it's cap true. Problems. Good, I mean, good he, point. Do, he does save money, which would make it make sense. Not a lot of money, Not though. a lot. Like six or seven million, I think he says. And how is the team that is so bad they had the number one overall pick tight against the cap? Good question. How are the Seahawks? Yeah. Uh, and the, Brown, the, and the, the Browns are tight team. to it, too, because at one point, Kevin Costner, like, after he makes the trade... He's like, can we make this work? Yeah. He goes to Jennifer Gardner, yeah. who's, like, the capologist. He's like, yeah, can we even make... Like, are we, do we even fit <laughs> right. under the cap? He doesn't even know. I've decided to finally check with somebody now that I've made the trade. <laughs> like, uh, can we afford this? The, no. Ah, fuck. Him, him and the Shit. woman that he's fucking... Get on the horn. <laughs> him and the woman that he's fucking seem to only communicate well when it comes to football. Yeah. And he doesn't know the cap situation and her job is literally cap lady. Yeah. So, like, what the fuck are they actually talking about in between getting each other pregnant? It's a good question. I don't know. Uh, 
and and saying that it all comes out in the wash is really bullshit because uh, Seattle moves down to to six, gets the player that they were intending on taking at number one, but they don't get any additional assets. No, they just get what they should have done. They just right. get what they should have. Like and all they, they do is save money, and they but they lose David Putney. They lose Putney. They lose the kicker right, turner. Yes. Because so they gave up. A player, like a roster player, to do what they should have done. To save a little bit of money, to yeah, right, to do what they should have done. Like, no way they don't get absolutely fucking killed yeah. for the way that they operated yeah. on that so, day. There is obviously a very notable lack of women in this movie, but I would love to see a version of this movie that does not have Allie in it. Yeah, because you're saying like a Ghostbusters remake, like an all woman remake of you know, just like, how do all of those bozos like, do that day without her? Because she's right. the one that says oh get this player from them in which she suggests have them throw in david putney dennis leary's like oh right they have that, that guy's on their team get him get putney. <laughs> yeah i thought of this I, I they gave me one of these in dallas yeah for sure this is my idea yeah cool <laughs> yeah i mean like yeah I, I, the, the idea that like seattle's like ooh, big win for us if we make this deal and that nobody's gonna be any uh, the tom's, wiser tom's embarrassed they're gonna get fucking <laughs> killed by the media yeah the, 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 o- the only person that comes out looking good in this is Costner. Mm. And like it makes it seem like it's a win-win for everybody. Even still, like Kevin Costner, at the end of the day, he still just got like a pass rusher and a running back and a kick returner. Yo, right, and you're going to have to like, and you're, you're, good. You're, quarter, and be, you're quarterback, you're still fucked at quarterback. And you don't have like, second-round picks anymore. And, right. Yeah, and people are going to be like, so you're paying Vontae Mack way more than he would have had to initially, but you're also going to have to pay... Like a running back more than he probably right. would have made. Like, I'd I don't have know to how look much at, better the Browns actually even are. Yeah, I'd have to look at it, but a linebacker, one, that's a pretty cheap investment just financially. Like, if they'd taken Bo, he's probably getting a lot more. Again, I'm a little rusty on this era of the draft, but if it were back because in the day, like preset like, brackets for now, I think it's more slot. Yeah, I think okay. it is okay. now, slotted. But, but but it used to be, oh, dude, so this was before it used preset. to be the okay. fucking wild West. If you took a quarterback, number one, overall, you were they paying were, like a hundred million. You were pay, they were like the highest paid player. And yeah. I remember tight ends used to complain about this where like, um, like Vernon Davis goes top 10 and is the highest paid top, uh, highest paid tight end ever. And, Good tight ends who just happen to be taken in like the fourth round are like, well, what the fuck? I'm yeah. never going to make this money in my entire career. Uh, so, yeah, that's the, that movie's the fucking best. <laughs> we can uh, we can go around now and cast our our, our votes here. We could have Pete. You want to go first on? Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, I, in terms of like a discussion. Uh, draft day is a more interesting discussion. I think there's more Better to, brunch movie. There's more to break down there. There's more to sink your teeth into. Uh, but in terms of like an actual movie, I would say that old school is better and more deserving of the 60 ranking. I, I would I mean, I would say that old school probably deserves to be high 70s. I'm going to let I'm going to let Jones be a tiebreaker here because I am going back and forth. I think that in my heart of hearts Old school might be a better movie, but it's so much worse than I remembered it That's being. I, I remembered it being like the best movie ever. <laughs> and I just see it now and it's not the best movie ever, but it's still a good movie. And I'll never know what I think of Draft Day. I'll just know that I think of Draft Day quite often. So I think there's an argument to be made for... Fuck. Uh, yeah, give me... Give me draft day over old school. So I, I'm not down on old school. You're down on old school. I'm like, I don't want you're to just, just no, you're, like you're I, down on old school. You're down. Mm. You don't love old school. What am I, a jerk? Would yeah, you, yeah you, what are you, a jerk? Would you say higher or lower or like correct at 60? I think that 60 is pretty appropriate. It's got some shock value. It's funny for being inappropriate, which is there's certainly virtue in that. Yeah, I think that... I I, I could see a bunch so, of critics seeing it and being like, it's funny at points, not necessarily a good movie. Uh, I think it is a pretty good movie, though. It's a pretty I'll, good movie. I'll make the... I'll, see, I just think you're down on old school. So th- I'm not saying this disparagingly to old school, but put me down Put me down for draft day. Put me down for draft day. It's a, <laughs> ri- it's a wild ride of, you know, uh, just a, a, a cinematic masterpiece. And I would say this. 
<laughs> when it comes to Kevin Costner, the only thing I think they could improve on in this movie, I want the last week of his life. I didn't want a day. I wanted I wanted the week. Because this guy is in, as much as Mitch is in turmoil, yeah. this guy's in turmoil. He killed his dad, basically. <laughs> yeah. He's knocked up his coworker. Mm -hmm. Like he's his owner, his boss is threatening his job. I mean, there's a lot of parallels to Mitch. Oh in, yeah. In old school with the with the turmoil that they're in. But yeah, put me down for put me down for draft. I would I would even say uh, let me ask you this question. If you had to take a sequel for one of these movies, you get draft day or you get old man old school. And these are both spring break themed? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what happens with the Browns, so draft day. I would love to I would love to have a fucking Madden franchise. I don't I haven't played a video game in a hundred years. I'd love to have a Madden franchise that is whatever that year is of the Browns. Twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen Browns. Just like give me fucking did you Brian notice? Drew with his rocket crazy. <laughs> did you notice they like arm? They snuck in at one point. They have a star receiver. They never mentioned him really by name, but they're like, oh yeah, and our star receiver. That's also bad script where he's like, hey, Sonny, the GM, it's me. Chris, the strength coach, I was talking to the oh, star yes. receiver yeah. of yeah. our right. team, the Cleveland Browns, yeah. Yeah. Bill, and Bill said, listen, Chris, the strength coach, <laughs> Brian yeah, Drew, our tough. quarterback, looks really good coming off of the arm injury that he had. Yeah. Yeah, that that was some real like uh, video game franchise shit that like shoehorned in that where yeah. they want to make like a cinematic experience for your video game. That's what that felt like. But anyway, Look, we want to give you the contract you want, yes. but it just seems like too much money. <laughs> right. <laughs> no specifics. Yeah. But the Browns, you got, you really got everything but the quarterback, I feel like, on that team. Yeah. So I, I, I'd like to know what, what happened. I would honestly them. take like a, a, a series of oh, a yeah. draft Yo. day series. Nice. Yes. Like sort of like a, uh, like a faux hard knocks. Oh, totally. That would be cool. Like a scripted hard knocks. That it's would just, be good. That'd be it'd good. It'd be playmaking. Good. Yeah. yeah. But no, but it would be funded by the NFL. So uh, it would be way less, yeah, uh, way less controversial. Much than more, much more polished. The NFL had playmakers canceled. Yeah. No which love stories. No, no, no. The, the star running back was doing uh, was doing crack cocaine uh, in in, oh, the, no, uh, in the locker room. No, but I was saying that the, um, the star receiver was gay. And oh, right. They like worked his relationship into the show, and True. they they put him on IR. True. For being gay. True. That was the most chaotic fucking show. I, I'll that never show had like line. three episodes, he and says, it was all like uh, outrageously dramatic you, shit. He says, you're putting me on injured reserve, but I'm not injured. <laughs> and they're like, have you ever rewatched yeah. it? Yeah. No. I just watched it when it was on. Yes. Oh, I, I could. I, I would. I would probably break it. Hives. Does it exist it. anywhere? It must exist somewhere. I, I would imagine that the NFL paid a lot of money just to have that wiped off like the that, internet. I'd like that to be scrubbed. That was chaotic. Did you guys ever play... Uh, Blitz the league. It yes. was similar yes. to. Yeah. It was like the same thing. It was like you guys hurt. Would you like to do steroids? <laughs> I really liked that game. Although you know what who, the fucked up thing. Who we, says? Who says no? Remember who no. the? Yeah. Oh, I always did it, and then yeah. you just yeah. ran the risk of either getting caught or getting hurt again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember who the quarterback was? No. In Blitz the league. No. He wore number seven. He was a left-handed mobile quarterback, and his name was Ron Mexico. Nice. Oh yeah. Nice. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. So there you have it. Draft day officially <laughs> greater than old school. Nice. As you all expected. Jones, thank you for doing this. Of what course. a party. What, what, a, what, what a movie critic this guy I know. was. What a party. What a million dollar. I'm happy to sit here on a million dollar Has idea. Has anybody ever told you that if you spent like 20 minutes gargling rocks, you'd sound exactly like Will Arnett? No. Ah. Oh, I need a little Michael. more. I need a little more gravel. Yes. Yeah. Right, give nice. us a. Give us a Michael. Michael. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. That yeah. Is. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's. I need a little more whiskey and, and Not cigars. Sorry. Oh yeah. yeah. He's got a lot of whiskey yeah. in his voice. Okay. Whis whiskey, cigarettes. Well, I think that he was famously an alcoholic. Oh, uh, that's. Yeah. yeah. That's. A, that's what I got to get my voice to get there. I can. I can. I can get into that. I Just can get I can, on that. Frank that, the Tank. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go start uh, ripping beer bongs like Frank the Tank. Yeah. All right. 